take on the University of Maine, trying to avoid the upset. Coming up next. On a gorgeous sun-splashed afternoon in DeKalb, Illinois, we are at Brigham Field at Husky Stadium for the Maine Black Bears out of the CAA taking on Northern Illinois, the Huskies from the Mid-American Conference. And welcome everybody, along with Florida State Seminole graduate Forrest Conley. I'm Doug Sherman, so glad you could join us here this afternoon. And when you've got one of these FBS, FCS matchups, Forrest, it's so important for the FBS team, in this case Northern Illinois, not to overlook the smaller competition. Well, for Northern Illinois, they should understand more so than any other ball club this season about overlooking a ball club that you're supposed to be. Northern Illinois goes into that Georgia Tech ball game, the first game of the season, and upsets the rambling wreck. So they understand they have to be prepared because Maine is coming in trying to do the same thing that Northern Illinois did early in this season. Well, NFL scouts have their eyes on Andre Miller. He's a mismatch at wide receiver for Maine. Six foot three, 220 pounds. He has only had five receptions in the last two ball games. I expect Maine to try and get him the ball, allow him to stretch the field against the smaller back end defenders that Northern Illinois will have out there trying to slow him down. Meanwhile, the Huskies have been running the football very well this season behind that man, Harrison Whaley. Well, Whaley is a power back. He's a guy that falls forward. He is a volume runner. Over 25 carries, over 150 yards in the outing against Wyoming. I expect them to feed the beast throughout the afternoon and make Maine pack the box and try and stop it. Now, if Maine decides to try and slow down Whaley, it'll fall on the quarterback, the Michigan State transfer, Rocky Lombardi. He's got a big arm. How accurate can he be? How much will the Huskies need him to lead the offense today? We'll find out on a gorgeous afternoon. Once again, we've got Maction from Northern Illinois University. Kickoff between the Black Bears and the Huskies coming up next. AFLAC policyholders have been paid $37 billion directly. That's a lot of money. Did somebody say money? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. AFLAC is ready for prime time. AFLAC is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. Nearly 25 years ago, lawmakers passed comprehensive internet regulations. What happened after that? Bears in his third year, Boston College graduate Nick Charlton, only 32 years old from Salem, Massachusetts, promoted from being the offensive coordinator at Maine after helping this program reach the FCS semifinals three years ago, trying to build this program now in his image. Meanwhile, back at his alma mater for his third year as a head coach, Thomas Hammond, class of 02 at NIU. He's one of the all-time great running backs. Over 2,000 career yards rushing. And now as head coach, his team one and two, expecting to make some noise in the Mac West coming up this fall. And we are underway with Northern Illinois grabbing the football first. Clint Ratkovich across the 20, and he is tackled from behind. And that is where the Huskies will take over first and 10 to begin this football game. And I expect the Huskies to come into this ball game and start off by running the football. They want to establish the line of scrimmage, and I expect these offensive linemen to fire out. Now, for Maine, you want to get some big plays early. You want to get push in the middle of that defensive line. You want to disrupt what Northern Illinois is trying to do early in this ball game to set the tone. The quarterback is Rocky Lombardi, a 6'3 redshirt junior from Clive, Iowa. On the toss, he goes to Harrison Whaley. He's got a hole, and he's got a first down. Move the chains for the Huskies. And you see early with Northern Illinois doing their moving linemen, they're pulling linemen, they're giving Whaley a, a convoy to run behind. And that is great success with this offensive line early. That's what you want to see if you're Northern Illinois, establishing the point of attack. From the 33-yard line. for the snap movement. Oh, 
offside with contact. Defense, number 95, five-yard penalty, first down. Justin Sambu, junior from Rocky View, Alberta, Canada. And this main defensive front, which they try to rotate nine fresh bodies throughout. They're down to eight today because Jamel Wiley, one of their captains, is not playing. He was a game-time decision. And on first and five, good push to pick up three. And you see early main is gang tackling. That's what you're going to have to do throughout the afternoon with Whaley. You cannot have one person try and hit him and think he's going to go down. You've got to gang tackle Whaley. You've got to make him feel you if you're a, de a defender for this main ball club. That's what you want to do with a, a, a constant back, a back that is one of those volume backs. You want to make them feel you every time you make a tackle. And so without Wiley, Sambu's going to have to step up. Xavier Mitchell also will likely get more reps. The redshirt senior from New Orleans on second and short. The flip to the receiver, turning the corner. Richie still on his feet, cuts at the 45. And down to the 41-yard line, a chunk play for Northern Illinois. And right now, the Northern Illinois offensive linemen are making contact first. The user the first to make contact wins the battle. Look at the offensive line for Northern Illinois. They're pulling around. They're not seeing defenders until they get to the second and third level. That is not a good look right now for Maine. They've got to get pushed at the point of attack. They've got to be more disruptive. Richie, one of their big receivers. That is his 11th catch of the year. And there's number 12 with a blocker. Out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. And this is what happens when you establish the run. Now you've got defenders coming in the pocket, which gives you man coverage on the outside. Once again, you see man coverage on the outside, and this is what you want to establish, and this is how you establish a passing attack if you're Northern Illinois. When you get that running game going, now you have seams, you have openings on the outside to get the ball to your playmakers. Following his blocker, big hole, stumbling across the 30 for another NIU first down. Harrison Whaley's not the biggest guy necessarily, 5'10", 185 pounds from Johnston, Iowa, but he is tough to bring down. Well, he's a fall forward runner. He's one of those guys that falls forward every time he runs the football. And that's what you love about him, and that's what you love about a guy that you depend on being a volume runner. Well, the defensive coordinator for Maine, Michael Ryan, told us a couple of days ago, quote, number 30 scares me. Right there, though, he stopped at the line of scrimmage for no gain. And a good job by the linebacker, linebacker filling the gap. That's what you have to have if you're going to stop this rushing attack. The defensive linemen have to cover up these offensive linemen, especially the guards in the center, and not allow them to climb to the second level. What that does is that allows the linebackers to flow downhill freely. Adrian Otero with that tackle, bringing up second down and 10. Richie the motion man. Quarterback keeps. Lombardi, one man to beat. Tries to push his way inside the 20, and he's out of bounds at about the 11-yard line. But Lombardi's got the size to do that, 6'3", 219. And when you're 6'3", 219, facing a 5'10", 170-pound defensive back in Kaluba Peewee, this is what happens. You don't want the quarterback to push you around if you're a defender, but there's such a size advantage between the two. A good job by Peewee trying to hang on and trying to get Lombardi out of bounds, but a better job by Lombardi fending off the defender and getting extra yards. Messiah Travis, the receiver to the right. Lombardi hands it off. Harrison Whaley right up the middle. And right now, the offensive line is doing a very good job. They're getting a push at the point of attack. The interior of the offensive line is doing a good job of getting up to the second level and covering up those linebackers. Once again, if you're a defensive lineman, you've got to try and uproot those guys. When you're down inside the 10-yard line, it's more so of a goal line look. So I want to see defenders kind of bear crawl and try and get under the offensive lineman. But the same thing for the offensive lineman. This is why you do sled work. This is a part of practice that they practice getting under defenders. And you see right there, they got under the defenders and there was nothing for the running back to run into. He walked basically into the end zone. 
virtually untouched, the number one rusher in the Mid-American Conference, Harrison Whaley, gets the Huskies on the board first. A seven-yard touchdown run to make it 6 nothing NIU. And when you watch the offensive lineman, watch the lineman hit first. You see movement at the point of attack. And you see Whaley basically walk into the end zone because they're covering up these linebackers. They don't know where the running back is. That is why the defenders have to do a better job of trying to not allow these offensive linemen to get to the second level because if they do, Whaley is strong enough once he gets going downhill to get to the end zone. Whaley's 12th in the country in yards per carry per game. That's his fourth touchdown of the year. Huskies on top early. AFLAC policyholders have been paid $37 billion directly. That's a lot of money. Did somebody say money? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. AFLAC is ready for prime time. AFLAC is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. Wow, this new Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Try it first. I need to try it first. Seven nothing, Coach Hammock's Huskies from Northern Illinois on top with an impressive 77 yard drive on nine plays. And more often than not, Harrison Whaley didn't have anybody between him and some pretty big yardage. Well, it starts up front, and when you look at what the defenders were not able to do, that is get pushed at the point of attack, be disruptive. So, what Northern Illinois was able to do is get linemen pulling around the edge, and they did not see a defender to the second and third level defenders, and that, my friend, is going to result in success every time for the offensive team. Okay, so now if you're Maine, you come in with a one and two record, your defense doesn't put up much of a fight on that first possession, the offense comes out, and for Nick Charlton, he's got his backup quarterback, Derek Robertson, getting his second start since replacing the injured Joe Fignano. For Robertson, we already talked about his big target, two-time co-captain Andre Miller. Keep an eye on number 10 in white. How did they attack here? I go to Andre Miller often throughout this ball game, and I make Northern Illinois show me they can defend him one-on-one. -on -one. Ball winds up on the turf, incomplete. Trying to find Miller and establish the six-foot, two-inch graduate who grew up just a couple of miles from the main campus in Old Town, Maine. And here's who he's trying to hook up with this afternoon, Derek Robinson. Robertson, Robertson's a native New Yorker from Yonkers, New York. That's just north of New York City. Another incompletion, terrific coverage by the corner. Jordan Gandy, a sophomore from right here in DeKalb. And you see what Northern Illinois is doing. They're going to make Robertson beat them. They're packing the box. They're playing man on the outside. Robertson threw a good pass. I think that Miller has to help his quarterback. He's got to make himself a big target. He's a big body receiver at 6'3", 220. Get your body in between the ball and the defender. Make the defender play through you. He's got to use his big body. Robertson won his first career start last week against Merrimack, 11 of 23 passing, 141 yards. And he's 0 for 3 on the first possession, a three and out for this Huskies defense. An immediate pressure on Robertson, and that is what I think we will see throughout the afternoon from Northern Illinois. When you've got a young quarterback, you don't want to give him time. You don't want him to get comfortable. You want to make him think and try and read what's going on. So you'll continue to see linebackers walk up into the gaps during the pre-snap reads to try and confuse him and trying to confuse the offensive lineman from Maine to try and get a steady pass rush and steady constant pressure on Robertson throughout the afternoon. David Gelb, senior punter from Manalapan, New Jersey, left footer, high spiral, fair catch called for by Cole Tucker, and the Huskies have the football back. Beautiful afternoon here in DeKalb for the Huskies on top. Nearly 25 years ago, lawmakers passed comprehensive internet regulations. What happened after that? If the internet has come a long way, shouldn't internet regulations too?
Through its first three games of the regular season, Maine's defense has not been good. We saw in the first offensive possession for NIU today, the Black Bears didn't really push back. What do they need to do to slow down this Huskies offense? Well, I think for the Maine defensive line, they've got to do some tricks. They've got to do some stunts. They've got to try and make the offensive linemen think during their pre-snap reads. You can't just play a basic base defense because you've got some hand eaters on that offensive line for NIU. So I think they've got to try and confuse them and try and mix it up a little bit. Whaley met after a three-yard gain. Well, uh, Maine's defense at the moment is last in the CAA in total defense, in sacks, and in third down conversion percentage, but they bow up a little bit there. Well, because you've got congestion. You don't have anywhere, any lanes for the back to run. And that's what they have to do. You've got to get up the field initially, but then you've got to continue to mix it up. If you mix it up, now you create a thinking problem for the offense. Right now, once again, you see what they're doing. They're mixing it up, and they are not allowing the backs to break to the outside. Austin Chambers, graduate student, and Brigham Young transfer, making the stop of Whaley there. And what they're doing, they're allowing the linebackers to float downhill. The safety is coming up and getting in those lanes. That's what you have to do. You cannot allow these offensive linemen to get to the second level defenders and cover them up. As long as the defensive linemen do their job, play their role, play their gap, I think the main defense can get and have more success with stopping this rushing attack. Third down and five. Movement. And that may be the right guard that jumped off prematurely. Well, they called it being Nolan Potter, but he wasn't the only one. And offensive coaches hate this more than anything because as the offensive player, you know the snap count. You have to wonder, was that on the center? Because multiple linemen moved at the same time. Yeah. So that might have been on the center. Logan Schernitz, number 65, a guard, also went early. So now back him up five yards, third and ten. On a design run up the middle, Lombardi is tripped up. The tackle made by Kyrie Manns, the sophomore defensive end from New Rochelle, New York. And a great play by White because if he doesn't tackle Lombardi, I think he's still running. The, the lane was wide open. The middle of the field was wide open. Watch. Man's on this play. A good job deciphering what was going on and being able to grab his ankle at the last minute. Well, he really developed through the spring and summer. Young man with a bright future in Orono. So a three and out forced by this main defense. It's the punt by Ference into the wind. It backs up and lands at about the 20 and takes a roll right toward the goal line. It's going to be down by the Huskies at the one yard line. And you couldn't ask for a better punt. I mean, what else do you ask from your punter on that play? Great hang time and great roll. So Messiah Travis down to cover that punt, and you couldn't have asked for more. And just when the main defense gave the Black Bears something good to feel about, now they're staring at a 99-yard field. And oh, how momentum shifts. <laughs> you had main feeling really good about that last defensive series, and now... They've got their backs up against the goal line. Well, Maine head coach Nick Charlton used to be the special teams coordinator at Maine a few years ago, and he continues to make special teams a huge part of what they do. It's part of the culture, and they want to win that aspect of every football game. From their own end zone, nice job to get out to the five-yard line on the run from first down by Elijah Barnwell. And a good job by the offensive line on that play. And the thing that you have to be worried about if you're Northern Illinois is the defense is usually packed the box because they expect the run. So if the running back can get to the second level, there may not be any third level defenders to stop him. So they have to be careful on the back end of their defense with their safeties and make sure they're paying attention to the middle of the field. Four receivers spread. Flip it to the receiver running by Devin Young. And a huge play for the Black Bears to get, again, further from that end zone and pick up a first down, move the chains for Maine. 
and a good job by Young stretching that play to get to the edge to be able to plant that outside foot. You see right here, you've got a defender right on his tail, but he's able to get by the defender and plant his foot and get north and south. A good job waiting till he was able to get away from that defender to get the yardage that he needed to get the first down. And he picked up a nice block from senior receiver Xavier Scott. Rolling right, Robertson fires, complete. Miller, his first reception of the afternoon, his 10th catch of the young season. And the Black Bears pick up a second consecutive first down. And a good job sprinting your quarterback outside the pocket, giving him more time and more time for the play to develop. And a good job by Miller squeezing the football on that play. Earlier, he did not squeeze the ball. He turned upfield trying to make a play before he had possession. I'm interested to see how long Northern Illinois will play him man up with no safety help over the top. Robertson rolls the pocket to the near side. He is leveled. Did a good job to get rid of the football, but had no time at all to operate. C.J. Brown, Michael Kennedy, the defensive end with the big hit. And what they did on that play, they walked the linebacker up into the gap, and you saw the offensive lineman for Maine a little bit confused. The guard had a no-hitter on that play. You've got to find work as an offensive lineman. Hit somebody. If you don't know who to hit, just hit the most dangerous man that's able to get to the quarterback. Spoken like an offensive lineman. You're ready to go. I got maybe one play left in here. <laughs> <laughs> on the toss. Huskies defense, good pursuit to hold Freddie Brock to a pickup of maybe two yards. Sophomore from Rochester. That'll bring up third down and seven. But they're getting positive yards, and this is what I like about this main offense on this drive. They started at their own one-yard line, but you see some versatility in the offense. They're sprinting the quarterback outside the pocket. They're running some jet sweep action. I mean, they're doing a lot, and they're making this Northern Illinois defense react. Flags. I think this is on the defender. He influenced the offensive tackle. Offside, defense number five entered the neutral zone and caused a reaction by the offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. So the penalty on Michael Kennedy will bring up third down and maybe two for Maine. Much more manageable to try and keep possession of the football. And Michael Kennedy is the best pass rusher for this Northern Illinois defense. And you see him trying to get a jump start on a down that looked like it was definitely going to be a passing down. Well, he's still looking for his first sack of the season, three sacks in his career. The young man out of Mount Carmel High School in Chicago. Play clock at 13, plenty of time for Robertson. Fakes the handoff, completes the pass over the middle for another main first down into NIU territory. It's Andre Miller with another big catch. And a great read by the young quarterback. He surveyed the defensive set, and you see him real quickly get the ball to his big playmaker in the middle of that defense. And once again, it's going to be interesting to see what adjustments the NIU defensive staff make because Andre Miller is starting to eat him up on the inside as well as the outside. Three receivers bunched to the top of your screen. You're going to keep it on the ground and run the other way, though. And NIU's defense was ready for it. Jordan Gandy once again with a tackle for loss. And it seems like on that play, the NIU defensive staff said, let's just go get him. Everybody came downhill. You see great pressure up the field, nowhere for the back to go. You've got pulling guards and pulling tackles. You've got to get a hat on somebody. But when there are too many defenders, they're going to have the advantage. And you see the advantage on that play. They were able to make the tackle in the backfield. On second down to the air again, complete to Devin Young. A lot of room, puts his foot in the ground, makes the safety Hanson miss to pick up even more yardage down to the 28. Watch you look at my big fellow, the left tackle, P.J. Barr. A great play by number 74. Watch him get to the outside. Boom, cover him up. Now you give the seam to the receiver to get up the field. A great play on the outside with the block, covering up the defender, allowing Devin Young to get positive yards. Now he's a man who makes people miss. Coaches say he can be even more productive, but that was a big play there. First and ten, Maine began this drive on its own one-yard line. 
Robertson with time throwing deep down the middle just out of the reach of Andre Miller and I thought Robertson threw that prematurely if he waits one more second and allows Miller to clear the defender I think we're, we're celebrating the touchdown for Maine on this play a great play call uh, he just threw it prematurely put a little bit too much on the football but once again NIU is not challenging Miller on the outside. They're allowing him to play against man coverage. And if they continue to do that, I think he's going to have a big ball game. On the ground, big hole. Cutting it outside, Freddie Brock. He's got a chance to get there, and he does. Touchdown, Black Bears. broken ankles on this play. <laughs> this is one of the best cuts I've seen in a very long time. Freddie Brock stops. Boom. And you see the defender right now trying to pick his ankles up off the field. And then when Brock gets to the outside, it's catch me if you can. I'm the fastest person on the field. I'm going to get to the end zone before you can get hands on me. Great job by this man offense to drive the ball 99 yards down the field. Brock had a couple of touchdowns, one rushing, one receiving in the win over Merrimack last week. And his 28-yard touchdown run here has the Black Bears in position to tie it up. On the point after, 7-7 seven, seven our score. Maine goes 99 yards, capped off by number 28 from 28 yards out. AFLAC policyholders have been paid $37 billion directly. That's a lot of money. Did somebody say money? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. AFLAC is ready for prime time. AFLAC is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. Fourth-year offensive coordinator Andrew Dresner had to love what he just saw there, Forrest. His offense with a beautiful 99-yard drive. Well, they played with poise. They played with patience. They did not seem worried. And they ran multiple sets and multiple plays and made the Northern Illinois defense think they kept them on their heels. Well, one thing Maine has is an experienced offensive line. And Dresner says, we can't catch those guys off guard. They are ready to go. So after the tying touchdown, flags down on the return as the Huskies get the football back. After the return by Trayvon Rudolph. talking about what they had for lunch. I mean, you got flags all over the field. <laughs> got to figure out a lot of things here. There are two fouls in the play, both against the receiving team. Personal foul, illegal blind side block, receiving team number 16. That penalty is declined. Holding, receiving team, that penalty is accepted half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. First down. Let's take another look at the touchdown run capping off that 99-yard drive. Well, watch the fleet of foot right in the hole. You see Jordan Hansen, you know, right here. He's got a beat. Stop. Ankle time. Now he's going. Now you've got number six, C.J. Brown. He has an opportunity. Ankle time once again. And then Brock gets to the outside, and he's going to beat every defender to get to the pylon to get the score for Maine. Well, that Maine offense with Brock carrying the football four times for 32 yards, including the 28-yard touchdown, and then Robertson, four of nine passing, 62 yards, efficient. Rolling the pocket out, giving him time. He's made good decisions. Now from inside their own 10-yard line, the Huskies have nowhere to run. 
Nowhere to hide thanks to the Mike linebacker, Ray Miller, the Campbell University graduate transfer and the new leader of this Black Bears defense. And what's interesting on that play, the offensive lineman had the second level defenders covered up, but you saw Miller decipher where the football was with all of the log jam pouring up, and he was able to be a missile. You see him right here, he's reading, he sees the ball, now he just takes off and grabs the offensive player. That's what you want to see from your middle linebacker. Decipher where the ball is and then go get him. That was Jay Ducker who had the carry. Now Clint Ratkovich up the middle and once again being met by Ray Miller who the Black Bears coaches said that uh, when the NFL scouts are in Orono, he's one of the two or three guys they're really keeping an eye on. Well, he's built like you want a middle linebacker to be six foot one, 230 pounds. He comes downhill. He plays with an aggression that you need as a middle linebacker. You've got to be a mean, tough guy to be in the middle of a defense because everything is dependent on you disrupting what the offense wants to do. What do you think about his size for the next level, 6'1", 230? Well, I think they're going to more of a hybrid look for defenses now. You need guys that can cover. You need guys that can pass rush. You need guys that can come downhill. And I think he fits the mold when you look at the size that he has. On third down, Lombardi gets the motion man, Cole Tucker. Out of bounds at the 30-yard line. It's a first down for the Huskies. And I don't know what type of defense man was playing on that play because nobody was outside with the receiver. You see him wide open. The defense reacts late and they're able to get him out of bounds, but you don't want to see that type of play when you've done so well early on the defensive stance. With some tempo, the Huskies making moves. Trayvon Brutal in the main territory. Rudolph's the fastest guy on the team for Northern Illinois. They just want to get him the football out in space and let him do that. Lombardi handed off Ratkovich, picks his way through the hole for another big gain. He picks up about nine as the Huskies are on the move. And Maine had good pressure initially on that play. Number 44, Rafael Salomon, had an opportunity to make a play in the backfield. He couldn't hold on to the offensive player, but good initial pressure getting in the backfield. Lombardi to the air. He's got a man. It's complete. Another NIU first down to Cole Tucker. The redshirt junior from DeKalb. He is a legacy. His father, Brett, was a standout defensive back for the Huskies and was a draft pick of the Houston Oilers back in 1990. Here's his son getting things done. Rakovich chopped down for a loss of maybe a yard. Now, can this main defense be a bend but not break defense? Can you prevent them from getting a touchdown? Can you put them in a position where they have to go for a field goal attempt? Kyrie Manns with another tackle. It was a loss of one. Three receivers to the right for Northern Illinois. Finishing the first quarter. We got ourselves a football game. Northern Illinois scored first, but Maine drove 99 yards to tie it up. And as we head to the second quarter, the Huskies once again knocking on the door in this matchup between FCS and FBS. When you come in for our coffee, you don't just leave with better mornings. You leave supporting brighter futures and bigger dreams. Supporting family business. Girls with curls. And working moms. When you shop black owned. Mexican American owned. Korean and queer owned. You leave with change in your hands. Nearly 25 years ago, lawmakers passed comprehensive internet regulations. What happened after that? If the internet has come a long way, shouldn't internet regulations too? The start of the second quarter in DeKalb, Illinois with Forrest Connolly, I'm Doug Sherman. 
And Northern Illinois is on the move with the football. First and 10 at the main 22-yard line. Lombardi, a perfect now six for six on the afternoon, including that touchdown pass to put the Huskies back on top. On the receiving end, the man who transferred in from Western Illinois, Clint Ratkovich, 13-7, Northern Illinois. And you see total confusion on this play. They put a man in motion in number seven. Xavier Nurse goes over, but he's looking for the quick pass to the receiver. And Ratkovich just walks out to the end zone. There's nobody covering him. A good job by Lombardi deciphering what the defense was doing in the bad decision that they made. And he just lofted the ball out to Ratkovich for an easy touchdown. Point after by Richardson is good. 14-7, Northern Illinois. What happens is when you put someone in motion, you can decide for what type of defense they're playing, if they're playing man or if they're playing zone defense. So what Lombardi did was he understood when a defender went with his receiver to the other side of the formation, they were playing man coverage. So all he did was react to what the defenders were doing. Watch, well, you see number seven, he goes in motion, he goes with the offensive player, and then Radkovich just walks out to the end zone. Basically, he's just jogging out there waiting on the ball to come to him because both defenders went with the outside receiver thinking it was going to be the quick pass game, something that we've seen early. So I think it was a really good play call by the NIU offense and a good read by Lombardi to know that his offensive player, Radkovich, would be wide open. How has the addition of the transfer Ratkovich changed this NIU offense this year? Well, he's their Swiss Army Knife player. He catches the football. He does kickoff returns. He's got two kicks on special teams. And he's a downhill runner. He's one of those guys that you can just put all over the field because he can make plays. He's just not a one-dimensional player. Sometimes they put guys, they spread them out, and you know they're not going to get the ball because they can't catch the football. But he can catch the football, so you have to react to wherever he is. Devin Young, the return man for Maine, pushes the pile out to the 29-yard line. Let's take a look at the uh, match scoreboard, and how about the one in the middle? Just a couple of minutes left. Bowling Green trying to upset Minnesota. No, P.J. Fleck, a former Mac coach, is not what you want to see if you're the Minnesota faithful. Uh, but that's why you played the game, to win the football game, and you cannot overlook any opponent. It never fails. A Big Ten school falls to a Mac school at least once every year. Absolutely. Because a lot of these kids are kids that were overlooked by Big Ten schools, and they have something to prove. And they want to let the coaching staff that did not offer them scholarships know, you should have came to me. You should have gave me an opportunity. <laughs> by the way, we are at the alma mater of P.J. Fleck. He was a tremendous receiver at NIU back in the day. His team just about to lose to the Falcons with a couple of minutes left to play up in the Twin Cities. And look at this offensive line right now. They're getting pushed at the point of attack. And they're doing something now that they did not do on that first drive. Those guards in that center are getting up to the second level defenders and covering up these linebackers. The defensive line for Northern Illinois is getting pushed around right now. The running back is the Rutgers transfer, Elijah Barnwell, who picked up nine yards on first down. Robertson gives it right back to him. And the 5'11 junior from Piscataway, New Jersey, real close to the line to gain, had to get to the 39. And it is a first down. And look at the point of attack. You see movement by the white jerseys. And a good job by Barnwell getting behind those big fellas and falling, falling forward. That's what you want to do. You just want to get the first down. You don't have to worry about the big play all the time. Get the first down, and they're running behind the big fellow, Tyree Francois, 6'5", 339 pounds, number 76. If I'm running the football, I'm running behind the big fella every play as well. <laughs> From Auburndale, Florida. The center is one of the captains, Michael Jirachi. Little trickery, Xavier Scott on the reverse, and Northern Illinois was having none of it. Coming up to blow that play up, the linebacker, Lance DeVoe. And some of the fans that are looking at the game are going to ask why the offensive lineman, number 62, did not get that block. That was a blindside block. That would have been a penalty on the offensive line. They're trying to protect the players. So that was a good job by Michael Garachi not taking that shot, which used to be legal, but he's doing a good job. That was a good decision by him on that play. Robertson, quick strike, as his man Miller 
out to the 44-yard line. And when we talked to the NIU head coach, Thomas Hammock, a couple of days ago, you asked him, what are the biggest challenges coming into this game when you face Maine? And he said, our biggest challenge is the unknown, trick plays and things like that. And I'd say on the first trick play we saw from Maine, his defense was ready and executed to perfection. Well, you can't go for the IG. You've got to play your position, play your role, and play your keys. Don't go for the eye candy, the big play, or you will give up a big play on those trick plays. Third down and four, Robertson has his man Young over the middle for a first down. And a uh, good job by Robertson. He had pressure right in his face, but he backed up, allowed his receiver to clear, and deliver a strike for the first down. That's what you want to see from your young quarterback. You see him, he's got pressure coming. He knows he's going to get hit, but he waits just a split second to get the ball out to Devin Young to get the first down. Josh Earl, one of the reserve safeties who was in the face of Robertson, who was undeterred. A second sustained drive for this Maine Black Bears offense. Picked to finish ninth in the CAA this year. Robertson, plenty of time, throwing down the right sideline, looking for his big play receiver, Miller. Got it inbounds for a huge play, and the Black Bears once again knocking on the door in the red zone and great concentration, almost a back shoulder throw. Watch Miller adjust his body. He's got a five inch height advantage, and you see Miller turn and adjust his body at the last moment to get that right foot down, a great job. The defender's grabbing him, holding him, but you see right there, and he's got that right, excuse me, the left foot down, a good job on the outside by Miller, and a great pass by Robertson where only his receiver could make a play on the football. Two tight ends on the left. Handed off up the middle, contact at the line of scrimmage, but Barnwell bounces off of it, gets inside the five-yard line, very near another first down. And this is a reflection of what Coach Hammock talked to us about during our call. He said that they practiced tackling all week in practice. That was a point of emphasis because they had too many missed tackles in that Michigan ball game. And you see on that play, he ran through about three arm tackles by the defenders. You've got to wrap this young man Barnwell up to bring him down. He's a hard nose, fall forward type runner, kind of like Whaley on the other side of the football. Barnwell again, kicks it outside and walks into the end zone untouched. And you see the result of an over-pursuing defense. Everybody came crashing down inside thinking it was going to be an outside run. And a good job by Elijah Barnwell to read what the defenders were doing and bounce it to the outside, getting into the end zone untouched. Arnwell's a man who uh, originally committed to Buffalo out of Piscataway High School in New Jersey. Then when his hometown Scarlet Knights said, we want you, he went and played the Big Ten. Played a little linebacker, was a running back, special teams, got into 12 games, but decided to transfer to Maine, where he is their feature back. That's his second touchdown of the young season. Johnny Messina's PAT is good, and well, Maine has answered right back. The Black Bears are not flinching on the road here in DeKalb. It's all tied up, 14 apiece between the CAA upstarts trying to take down a little action. Nearly 25 years ago, lawmakers passed comprehensive internet regulations. What happened after that? If the internet has come a long way, shouldn't internet regulations too? Minnesota 14 to 10, the first time in six years the Falcons have beaten an FBS opponent, and it has happened again. Well, that's the dangers of playing an FCS opponent. These guys circled this ball game all offseason, yep. and that is a part of their training regimen to beat that big boy ball club 
that everyone expects to win that football game. And a lot of these kids have been overlooked, so they get an opportunity to throw it back in these coaching staffs and these recruiting staffs' faces that they were, you know, of the caliber of being at that school. So I'll tell you what, these Maine Black Bears would love to add their name to this list already this season. That many upsets, FCS, FBS. And you have to identify the one on 9-11, the Florida State Jacksonville yeah, State loss. Yeah, sorry, loss. brother. <laughs> but, I mean, you, you got to talk about it. I mean, the way that they lost that football game on the last second touchdown, a Hail Mary type play. Uh, but I, it's good for FCS football because we're seeing more parity in football this season. You're seeing more small teams come up to the big boy stadiums and win. Well, we thought on the first possession today, uh-oh, this main defense was not going to be able to stand up to the NIU offense, but we have seen a different Black Bears team, really, since that first possession of the game. And I think you've seen somebody get hit in the face. Watch this play. Watch the running back get halted. Boom, right at the hole. That's what you want to see from your defenders. Step up into the running back's face and hit him hard. And a great play by Otero, stepping up into the back's face and putting a face mask on a face mask and knocking him backwards. Second down and nine. Lombardi, who's yet to throw an incompletion. There's his first. Throwing into double coverage up the sideline, and that'll bring up third down and nine. And two things have stood out to me since that first drive by Northern Illinois. The offensive line for Maine is getting movement at the point of attack, and the defensive line for Maine is controlling the line of scrimmage right now. They're not allowing these offensive linemen to get pushed, and they are doing a good job of reading and reacting what Lombardi is trying to do with the football. Rudolph, Tucker, and Richie, the three receivers to the left. That's Rudolph in motion. Pressure. Lombardi gets the pass away. It is caught, but short of the first down. On the grab by Rudolph, the second-year freshman from Freak, Illinois. And a good job by Shakur Smalls. Jamming Rudolph at the snap of the football, kind of knocking him off his route, not allowing him to get past the sticks for Lombardi tried to go to him with the football. Now, Rudolph is one of four former walk-ons for NIU now playing as a starter. A type of development in the program is what Thomas Hammock wants to continue to grow here in DeKalb. They're going to go for it on fourth down, but before the snap, we've got a whistle and a timeout called by the defense. And we'll step away as well with fourth and two looming. A big potential stop up coming for the Black Bears. When you come in for our coffee, you don't just leave with better mornings. You leave supporting brighter futures and bigger dreams. Supporting family business. Girls with curls. And working moms. When you shop Black-owned. Mexican-American-owned. Korean and queer-owned. You leave with change in your hands. AFLAC policyholders have been paid $37 billion directly. That's a lot of money. Did somebody say money? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. AFLAC is ready for prime time. AFLAC is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. On fourth down and two from their own 33-yard line, Thomas Hammock has decided to go for it. Forrest, what message does this send to his team and to the other side? I think what it tells the main ball club is we are nervous about what you've been able to do offensively. We don't want to give you the football back. And I think what it does for your own defense is it gives them caution because it makes you feel like the coaching staff may not believe in you and your ability to stop this main offense. Rocky Lombardi, the quarterback. And, and now a timeout called by the offense. And I don't like this because you've wasted a timeout. And when you have a timeout previous to this play, I know the main coaching staff had time to talk 
to all of their defenders and say, hey, do not jump off sides. They had a better opportunity to get those guys to jump off sides when they were just going with the play as opposed to calling a timeout and then trying to go with that play. I think it's a waste of timeout, but I still think it sends a message to that main ball club that they are nervous about what they've been able to do offensively with those two scoring drives. And it sends a message to this Northern Illinois defense that, you know, we don't feel good about you, our guys' ability to stop what Maine is doing offensively. So now you see the quarterback has got his helmet off, Lombardi on the sideline, and the punt team has indeed come out of the field. Matt Ferentz playing in his 49th career game with the Huskies. And a fair catch made by Jacob Henney. So what do you make out of all that? We have two timeouts used. Ultimately, they punted the football away, but the things you were saying during that sequence, you still feel those messages are being felt both ways. Absolutely. And now you've got a main offense that feels confident that Northern Illinois did not want to give them the football back. They've been able to run the ball successfully. They've got the ball to Andre Miller. I mean, they've done a good job so far offensively outside of that first series where I think it was kind of Kind of an exploratory discovery series to see what type of defense they'd be facing. And so the Black Bears get the football back with 9.20 remaining in the second quarter. Young in motion. He'll be the lead blocker for Barnwell. And it's a good pickup of five yards on first down. And because Maine has been able to run the ball effectively, you're now seeing Northern Illinois put eight in the box. They're still playing man on the outside. And you see push. I see white jerseys getting a hat on a hat, getting push at the point of attack, and the backs aren't seeing defenders until they get to the second level. Robertson, play fake, throws, incomplete. Terrific coverage by the safety, Jordan Hansen, getting right up on Andre Miller. And I think Robertson predetermined where he was going with the football because Devin Young, number two, was wide open in the middle of that defense. Watch number two, Devin Young. If Robertson goes through his progressions, he has Devin Young wide open, but a good job by number seven, Jordan Hansen, jumping that route and going to the football, not through the defender, but knocking the ball down. That'll bring up third down and five. Robertson glances back over to the main sideline. He's going to throw the football on third and five. The pass a little bit behind his intended receiver and a terrific tackle by Rodgers to make sure the tight end, Sean Bowman, couldn't get to the sticks. But that's what you want to do, get great coverage by Rodgers. Once the receiver gets possession, bring him down. Don't allow him to plant and get up the field. Rodgers did a good job of getting his arms wrapped around the receiver and bringing Bowman down. You can't allow the big tight end to get his momentum going forward. He was always going east and west. He was never able to get north and south in that play. So a good job by Rodgers getting him down and preventing the first down. And you know what? At 6'2", 180, he's got good size for a young cornerback to be able to match up with a tight end. He's their best cover corner on the boundary and forces the punt. Going to try and return it from the 15-yard line, a pickup of five yards, and the Huskies will come out with their offense, trying to retake the lead midway through the second quarter here in DeKalb, Illinois. Nearly 25 years ago, lawmakers passed comprehensive internet regulations. What happened after that? If the internet has come a long way, shouldn't internet regulations too? remaining second quarter here in DeKalb. We've got ourselves a football game, and I ask you this for us. For Maine or for NIU, who is looking at this as a more important game? Who's got to win this game more than the other? Well, definitely NIU. Look at uh, this ball game. They're a 
out there, an FCS ball club, excuse me, an FBS ball club, playing against an FCS ball club. They're playing at home. They're getting ready to step into conference play. As you see, the MAC is going to be a very tough conference with the big win that Bowling Green had today over Minnesota. This is a must win for this NIU ball club. For Maine, if they win, surprise, surprise. If they lose, they were expected to lose the ball game. So I think for NIU, this is a must win and a more important ball game. Personal foul, face mask. Defense, number 11. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. Kyrie Manns got himself in good position, just had that right hand get up a little high. Make it the left hand as we take another look. And so the personal foul moves at 15 yards out across the 35 for Northern Illinois quarterback Rocky Lombardi. Play fake, roll right, throw on the run. A shoestring catch for a first down out near midfield. A terrific grab by Tyrese Ritchie. And Lombardi was under pressure. He did not have an open opportunity to throw the football, although he was able to get it out there. But that's what you want to do for Maine. You've got to keep pressure on the quarterback. Don't allow them to just go down the field unattended. Ratkovich going to lead block for Ritchie on the reception. Still on his feet inside the 35-yard line. The Huskies on the move once again. And you see the Swiss Army knife, Ratkovich, a great block on the outside. He maintained that block. When it got to a position where he could have been called for a hold, he let the defender go. That's what you don't see receivers do often. They want to make the great play, and they often get called for holding when a defender tries to break away to go make a tackle. Good job by Ratkovich on the outside. What do you think of the play calling so far for NIU? Well, I like what they're doing. They're getting the ball to their playmakers in space and allowing them to make plays. That's what you want to do. Harrison Whaley, who leads the Mac in yards per game, is the running back. Fake the handoff to him. Another strike over the middle inside the 20-yard line. And the Huskies have another first down on the reception. Trayvon Rudolph. And it's interesting because Maine has shown NIU they can stop the run, but they've yet to show them they can stop this passing attack. Will Lombardi continue to be able to get down the field with the football? Screen pass dropped by Ritchie. It was a forward pass, so incomplete. And speaking of Lombardi, what was interesting, and you and I talked about this, when we talked to the coaching staff and we asked about the Michigan State transfer, they said, you know, he's a great game manager. Something you don't hear quarterbacks accept. Quarterbacks don't want to be known as a game manager. They want to be known as a game changer. But what they said about Lombardi is he doesn't care about stats. All he cares about is winning. And that's leadership. And they love the fact that he's getting guys in place and being a vocal leader for this offense. Well, he's now 10 of 12 after the pitch and catch to Richie, who's still on his feet and reverses field. Lombardi out in front to lead with a block. And Richie gets down to the nine-yard line. Shall I say shades of Marcus Allen in the Super Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> Great reversal field. You see the athletic ability to get to the outside by Richie, and then he cuts it back of all the way across the field and he's able to get north and south to get positive yards on what should have been about a three or four yard loss on that play. Finally brought down by Josh Lezen, the nose tackle in pursuit. A gain of eight on the play. And so third down and two, you see third down conversions. The Huskies one out of three this afternoon. Up the middle, Rakovich. Push back. Where will his progress be marked? It's right around the seven yard line, which is where they needed to get, but I think he's just a little bit short. And a good tackle on the outside by Brian Lee because Ratkovich had bounced that to the outside, and there were no other defenders to contain him. He was going to be able to walk, not only for the first down, but basically into the end zone for another touchdown. So a good play by Brian Lee on the outside to make that tackle. Coach Hammett goes for it with the quarterback keeper up the middle. The size and push from Lombardi and the big guys in front of him. And they've got themselves a first down. Now we've got a flag after the play. Some extracurricular activity. I think it's going to be the NIU, the way the players are reacting. On the 
last possession, the Huskies showed like they were going to go for it on fourth down, but that was in their own territory. They ultimately decided to punt. Here they go with the ruling on, on the field down. as a first down was achieved after the play. There are offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct fouls. 83 offense, 15 defense. Both fouls will offset. That is the first unsportsmanlike conduct foul for each player. First and goal for Northern Illinois. Liam Sorgan, the tight end for NIU. Brian Lee, the linebacker for Maine. So they offset. And we've got first and goal at the seven yard line. Keep an eye on Tucker, number 15 in red on single coverage. They're going to run it right side, Lombardi. He's got blockers, cuts it at the five to the goal line. Touchdown, NIU. Well, Rocky Lombardi's a scratch golfer. He was a nationally ranked high school wrestler. He's gone into the big house at Michigan when he was at Michigan State and won a football game there. This is a versatile, talented young athlete. I'm sure it's in part too much girth on the outside. And those big fellas got to move, and once they got north and south of that push, there was nothing that the main defenders could do. Look at 65 and 69, get pushed at the point of attack. There's nothing they can do. You've got a big quarterback running the football. He's able to fall forward. Great job by the offensive line to get out the field and open up a lane for him to get the touchdown. PAT good by Richardson. I gotta ask you, is there a better name in all of college football than Rocky Lombardi? Named for the former Steelers great Rocky Flyer. He looks like a Lombardi. Getting into the end zone to put his team back up by seven. AFLAC policyholders have been paid $37 billion directly. That's a lot of money. Did somebody say money? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. AFLAC is ready for prime time. AFLAC is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. Today, you have to deal with a lot of moving parts. You want everything to be on autopilot. We got a huge increase in orders, but it's not And to be prepared if anything changes. I'll be right in. With IBM, you can do both. Your business can bring data together across your clouds from suppliers to shippers to the factory floor. So whatever comes your way, the wheels keep moving, seamlessly modernizing your operations. That's why so many businesses work with IBM. Nice work, everyone. The two coordinators for NIU, Derek Jackson, the DC on your left, Eric Eidsness, the offensive coordinator on the right. Got the hands full, but they continue to make adjustments. And I'll tell you what, when we talked to Eidsness, he asked him why you're running the football so much better this year. And he said, A, we've got more personnel groupings, and B, our offensive line this year is bigger and stronger and really doing a nice job of getting a push up front. When we talked about those guys squatting. Uh, he's got uh, offensive linemen now able to lift over 350 pounds so we're able to get pushed at the point of attack. And something that was impressive on that last touchdown play is they did not give it away. Usually on pull plays, offensive linemen and their pre-snap sets are a little bit high so they can get up and get out of there. But when you watch the guard and the tackle on that play, they were low on that play. They used to skip technique to get to the outside. You see number 69 get a kick out, number 65 get a seal, and then Ratkovich get another kick out block. 69 did a good job of not holding on that play, letting the guy go, and Ratkovich came in to clean it up. What a good job by the offensive line, not showing what they were going to do on that play. That's Nolan Potter, the right tackle, Logan Schernitz, the right guard, leading their way for the go-ahead touchdown. Maine now with a football back, down seven on first down, pass behind the intended receiver, Andre Miller. Well, what a story Miller is. As mentioned, from Old Town, Maine, grew up wanting to be a black bear, but his grades weren't good coming out of high school, so he went to two years of junior college. Tell you what, last spring he earned his degree in kinesiology. He's a 23-year-old who is going to get an opportunity to play on Sundays. And I love the perseverance, continuing to chase your dream and doing what it takes, accepting the challenge, not just settling for what you can have, but accepting the challenge to get to where you've always dreamed of being. Running between the tackles for a gain of seven yards. Good push up front to allow the ball carrier. 
and right now this main offensive line is winning at the point of attack. They've got a 34-pound weight advantage and a two-inch arm length advantage, excuse me, height advantage, which gives them a lot of arm length, and they're getting separation after they make contact on these defenders and getting the push. This hometown crowd comes to life on a big third down. Timeout, Maine. And I like the timeout on this play because this is a very big play. They're able to get this first down and get the ball down the field and put a score, whether it be a field goal or a touchdown, on the board going into half. That gives them momentum, and they also get the opening kickoff in the second half. So if I'm Maine, I'm coming up with my best play right now, my best, you know, three, four-yard play, because I want to get this first down and extend this drive. And this is where Black Bears head coach Nick Charlton wants their mantra, Maine tough, to come to play. Huge play. This is a school that is not in a huge recruiting base up in Orono, Maine. They're the farthest northern Division I football program, and so they view themselves as outsiders. They have to bring toughness. They have to be ballers, and we'll see it here on third down and four. Robertson throws. Incomplete. Had a man, but couldn't hook up for the tight end, Sean Bowman. He had open receivers on both sides, but you've got to set your feet. You can't get too excited. You understand it's a third down that you want to convert. You know what the play is. You know where you want to go with the football. But he had two receivers on opposite sides of the field wide open. But you see, he doesn't really set his feet. He puts too much on the football. Just settle down. Throw the ball out where your tight end Bowman can get it. He's bigger than the guy covering him. He's going to be able to turn up the field because there was a lot of field between him and the sideline. He would have been able to get that first down. Bull Tucker stands at his own 15-yard line. Makes the catch on the run, a dangerous play, and winds up giving up ground back to about the 12-yard line, maybe the 13, and that's where the Huskies will take over, and we'll see what they can do with 325 remaining in the half. Well, around the Colonial Athletic Association, Villanova, tough assignment going into Happy Valley. Penn State wins 38-17. This is a CAA league that at the FCS level is as good as any in the country. Richmond lost to Virginia Tech, but played the Hokies in a very tough environment to a good football game. Pittsburgh with a big win over New Hampshire. And William and Mary beat Elon. Later on, Fordham and Stony Brook. Coming up in about 10 minutes or so, 4 o'clock Eastern time. So Rocky Lombardi, who's rushing touchdown, last time they had the football, put the Huskies on the board to take the lead. Hands it off this time. And a good pickup on first down for NIU's Harrison Whaley. Well, Whaley enjoyed four consecutive 100-yard rushing games, topped by a career-high 179 against Wyoming September 11th. He's dangerous every time he touches the football. And Maine needs to be careful because their safeties are walking down close to the box. And if the running back Whaley is able to get past that second-level defender, there's no one else left. There's that burst. You know, Whaley came to NIU camp as a high schooler, more as a wide receiver defensive back, but immediately Coach Hammock identified him and said, this guy's a take. We don't know what we have in him, but they pushed him into being a running back, and it's worked out beautifully. Well, up to that Michigan game last week, he had four straight 100-yard rushing games, so he's very capable of busting one loose on this drive. Here's Whaley again. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Maybe pick up a half a yard. They say of Whaley, he's one of the hardest workers. He was really raw when he got to campus, but he immediately took to the coaching, and now he understands the schemes, and he runs the football with confidence. How important is that? Well, it's very important because you have to be confident in what you're able to do, and you have to be able to hold on to the football because you're playing in between the tackles. When he was a defensive back and a wide receiver, he was on the outside on the islands. Now you're in the middle of it where everything is happening, where all the action is. Lombardi with a strike. Richie, first down, Northern Illinois. Right now, Maine seems to be okay with just keeping the receivers in front of them, not allowing them to get over the top. 
Nine-yard pickup. Lombardi has been very efficient today. Clock running with a minute 40 to go before halftime. Lombardi hands it off. And again, a good surge on first down for a gain of eight. The flag comes in. Eight-yard pickup by Harrison Whaley out of Urbandale High School in Iowa. It stands. This running attack for NIU so much better this year. Whaley and Ratkovich have been a great combo. His first 15 yard penalty from the end of the play. The down counts. It will be second down. That's Logan Schernitz, the redshirt freshman from Spencer, Wisconsin, who he said such nice things about on his lead blocking for the go ahead touchdown. It's just unnecessary when you're trying to get another score on the board before the half. You cannot have mental mistakes like that. Second down and 17. Lombardi looking left. Going down the sideline. Contact, and there are flags coming from everywhere. Well, Kaluba Pee Wee Jr. was on an island, and he got flagged for the infraction. Well, the problem is he never turned around to locate the football. He got nervous and panicked and pulled the receiver down. Turn around and look for the football. He was in more of a position to make a play on the football than the receiver, but because he panicked and grabbed the receiver, he gave them a first down. You've got to turn around, be confident in your ability to cover the receiver and make a play on the football. Aluba's self-motivated, mature. Transferred from West Point, where he spent a little bit of time in the Army. He's a young man who was recruited out of high school by the Black Bears, and they finally got their man. Lombardi off the play fake all sorts of time. Now he's going to run it to the 40 to the 35 and he slides to the 33 yard line it's another first down well done by rocky lombardi and lombardi wanted to go to tyrese ritchie on that play but that was a good job by fofi Bassey, number 24 not being fooled by all the action going on with the misdirection and covering up ritchie so i thought that was a good job by lombardi to get what he could and get the first down under one minute to go in the half Whaley pushed back after a gain of one. And if you think about it for Northern Illinois, if they could get another score on the board before the half and go in up 10 with as tight as this ball game has been, they've got to feel good about that. But if I'm Maine, I've got to feel good about what they've been able to accomplish as well because they've got some positive drives, they've had some good play on defense, and they've bent but not broken on some of these plays. I think if they can bend but not break and hold them to a field goal attempt, let's say they don't make the field goal, then you've got big momentum going into the half coming out knowing that you're going to get the football. And if you're wondering about this, take a look at number 30, Whaley. Does he turn his ankle? Dragged back by the nose tackle, Josh Lezen. Yeah, it looked like that right ankle. One of the defenders fell on him, and he was in an awkward position. And Dorian Royal, number 96, I think, fell on him. And his ankle kind of bent up under him. He's on the sideline trying to test it out right now. He's going to try to put a little bit more pressure on him. Yeah, so Rakovich is in at the tailback position on second down and nine. Lombardi goes through his progressions, now gets rid of the football, and it's intercepted. Maine with a huge defensive play. 
Rich Carr with his fifth career interception, the best, most experienced defensive back for the Black Bears Forest, comes up with a huge play. Well, I want you to watch what Rich Carr did on this play. Ratkovich got to the outside. Nobody was initially covering him. Rich Carr sat there and waited on Ratkovich, and if Ratkovich tried to run by him, Rich Carr attacked the football. He saw Lombardi was getting ready to release the ball because the defender was running in his face, and what he did, he attacked the football as Ratkovich kept going down the field. If Lombardi puts air under the ball, Ratkovich may be going, well, you had a defender over the top, so there really was nowhere to go with the football on that play. There was just a bad play by Lombardi and a better play by Carr. Carr's a big play maker for the Black Bears. He blocked a pair of T PATs against Merrimack. Both returned for two points each in a tight ball game that made one last Saturday. Now his interception gives the Black Bears one last possession before the half. And, you know, I don't think Maine cares if they score or not. They know they're going to get the ball coming out of the second half. But to stop that drive with a big defensive play like that, that gives them all the momentum that they need to come out in the second half and continue to compete and look for the upset in this ball game. First half in the books, an entertaining first half here in DeKalb with Northern Illinois being challenged in this FBS-FCS matchup, 21-14. We'll take a break as the Huskies are trying to avoid the upset. Ratkovich the touchdown. The Black Bears, though, behind Barnwell, not backing down. It's halftime in DeKalb. Superhero to help save the planet. Small decisions make a world of difference. IKEA. Affleck policyholders have been paid 37 billion directly. That's a lot of money. Did somebody say money? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. Affleck is ready for prime time. Affleck is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. Really, Peyton, I don't need a chaperone on this trip. I can handle it. No need to thank me, bro. You know I love a good recruiting trip. Well, look at what we have here. A couple of Louisiana boys who didn't come to LSU. What's up, Coach? How y'all doing? Great to see you guys. Thanks for having us, Coach. I just want to tell you, as Eli's chaperone on this recruiting trip, I want to be up front. I don't think LSU's the right place for him. I think he'll be singing Rocky Top when it's all said and done. Well, it's quite a belt you got here. Well, Glad you wore it for this occasion. It is a special occasion. It's not every day you're... 40-year-old retired little brother uh, gets recruited. Well, babe, why don't you go show Mike the Tiger that wonderful belt you brought to LSU Tiger Stadium. Eli, I'm going to show you why LSU is the best place for you to come to get your football studies degree. I can't wait. Mind filling out a standard recruiting questionnaire? Sure, Coach. Thanks. Uh, uh, this is my recruiting trip. I'll fill it out. Hobbies. Watching my kids play sports and collecting fine wine. Probably the first time a recruits listed booze as a hobby. Nice. Uh, most influential person in my life. That's an easy one. <clears throat> Dad. Uh, 40 time. 4.7. Vertical jump. 38 and a half. Those are TiVo's combine numbers. It's actually brilliant. Why did I think of that? The first stop on Coach O's recruiting tour was the trophy room which included an item we Mannings never did get our hands on. In the football studies, you have to learn this, Eli. If you want to be a great coach, get great players. <laughs> we had Joe Burrow, won the Heisman Trophy. You want a great player and a great leader for the LSU Tigers. It looks heavy. Yeah, I wouldn't know. What else you got, Coach? Well, you guys know this. If you work your soul as a quarterback, you got to win the Manning Award. <laughs> And we have two of them here. If you win 10, you get the 11th free, Coach. It's the <laughs> Manning discount. Why are you running, by the way? I'm that is, running, that rolling is not, out. That's not accurate. Out. Why are you wearing a D-lineman face mask? Cover your neck? Talk to Dad about that. Cover thinks this award's named after him.
doesn't take a superhero to help save the planet. Small decisions make a world of difference. IKEA. Aflac policyholders have been paid $37 billion directly. That's a lot of money. Did somebody say money? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. Aflac is ready for prime time. Aflac is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. Back in halftime in DeKalb, Illinois, Northern Illinois with a 21-14 lead with Chris Connolly. I'm Doug Sherman. Thanks so much for being with us here today. And we've had an entertaining first half of football, beginning with Harrison Whaley, the outstanding Mac running back. Seven-yard touchdown to get it going, seven to nothing. Later in the first quarter, it was Freddie Brock who went 28 yards to tie the game. We see Brock cut to the outside, stop and go. He broke ankles on that play. A great job by the offensive line getting to the second level defenders. Second quarter, Rocky Lombardi with a touchdown pass to Ratkovich. He just walked in to make it 14-7, but the Black Bears came right back. Barnwell with a four-yard score. What do you know? 14 apiece. Impressive because that was a 99-yard drive. And then Lombardi kept it himself, and on the seven-yard carry, that's the difference in the football game so far. And on their final possession of that half, Lombardi huge with that interception by Rich Carr, and that kept the score right where it was, 21-14. And even though time of possession and total yards favors NIU, we've still very much got ourselves a football game. Well, I think Maine feels like they can win this football game. I think they came in thinking they could win it. After that first drive, I think everybody thought they weren't going to be able to be competitive. But they've since settled in. Their offensive line is getting great movement at the point of attack. And they've been able to effectively run the football. And I think the big thing for Maine is Andre Miller has been a big key getting involved. The big receiver on the outside making plays for this Maine offense. Four receptions, 73 yards so far in this ball game. Northern Illinois looking to avoid the upset against the FCS upstart from Orono, Maine. Back with more at halftime after this. Nearly 25 years ago, lawmakers passed comprehensive internet regulations. What happened after that? If the internet has come a long way, shouldn't internet regulations do? Aflac policyholders have been paid $37 billion directly. That's a lot of money. Did somebody say money? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. Aflac is ready for prime time. Aflac is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. Back at Brigham Field at Husky Stadium on the beautiful campus of Northern Illinois University, DeKalb, Illinois, on a gorgeous fall football afternoon. With Forrest Connolly, I'm Doug Sherman, and we've got ourselves a football game. And coming out of this halftime, what adjustments do you think we might see out of the coordinators on both sides? Well, I think for NIU, you've got to let Lombardi go down the field, especially with Whaley. We don't know how injured that ankle is. It'll be interesting to see how he comes out in the second half. And for Maine, continue to get the ball to your big play receiver, Andre Miller. He has been able to make plays down the field. He's been able to use that big body against the smaller defenders. I think you continue to Feed the big guy on the outside. Make that NIU defense make a decision. They have to start bracket covering him, which I think will open up other playmakers for this main offense. And the longer the Black Bears hang in this game, the tougher it's going to be for the Huskies. Absolutely, because now the nerves start to set in for NIU. They start to think, is this an opportunity for Maine to do to us what we did to Georgia Tech? And we talked about that early. Who is this ball game bigger for? This ball game is a must win for Northern Illinois. For Maine, if they lose the game, they're supposed to lose the game. But if they win the game, it is a huge win. Another huge win, actually, for FCS football teams. As we saw earlier today, when Bowling, excuse me, for a smaller team to win against a big team that's expected to win, as we saw with Bowling Green beating Minnesota. What will be the one biggest key for Northern Illinois to hang on to this football game? They've got to control the line of scrimmage. That's the big key. Whoever controls the line of scrimmage wins this football game. That's been the key all afternoon. Both teams have been able to establish the run at times because the offensive line has been able to get pushed at the point of attack. We'll come back with the third quarter of our football game that is a good one, Maine and Northern Illinois. When you come in for a coffee, 
you don't just leave with better mornings. You leave supporting brighter futures and bigger dreams. Supporting family business. Girls with curls. And working moms. When you shop black owned. Mexican American owned. Korean and queer owned. You leave with change in your hands. AFLAC policyholders have been paid $37 billion directly. That's a lot of money. Did somebody say money? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. AFLAC is ready for prime time. AFLAC is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. non-conference action for you from DeKalb, Illinois. Get ready for the start of the third quarter. 21-14 Huskies lead the Black Bears with former Seminole. Forrest Conley, I'm Doug Sherman. Why are you smiling when I call you a former Seminole? Because <laughs> <laughs> off camera, we were talking about the score right now of the Florida State game. Well, let, let's focus on the back and let's not bring in your goals to this one. I'm looking forward next week that noon kickoff between Western Michigan and Buffalo. Meanwhile, Northern Illinois opens up its conference play at home right here again. Same kickoff time on ESPN Plus against Eastern Michigan. And how about Bowling Green against Kent State? Kent State playing Maryland right now to a one-point game late in the first quarter. Bowling Green already with a big upset win earlier today. Well, for Bowling Green, let's see how they react to that upset win. A win where they were 30-point underdogs. They come in and upset that Minnesota ball club. Will they stay on that high and have a great game next week against a tough Kent State ball club? Meanwhile, in the Colonial next week, James Madison, the number one preseason pick. Delaware was number two, Villanova three. They are all nationally relevant teams. This is what we're looking at. And the Albany Great Danes taking on Delaware 3 o'clock Eastern time. CAA very, very good FCS football. And we are seeing some of that from the main Black Bears today. Pick ninth in the CAA, giving NIU all it can handle right now. Well, I think the CAA should be on alert right now because this main ball club has come to play in this game. And I think we will continue to see this throughout the season. Although I agree, James Madison is the team to beat in the CAA. Well, Kent State right now, late in the first quarter, at Maryland, trail the Terrapins just by 1.7 to 6. As we are underway in the third quarter, and the Black Bears with a big return out across the 30-yard line to get things started here in half number two. And just what the doctor ordered. You had a really good first half, and you come out on the opening kickoff of the second half and get about a 30... 32 yard return that is exactly what you want to see and I think what we see now I know teams always come in saying we think we can win the football game but I think that's a false narrative at times but I think this main ball club really feels like they can win this football game Quarterback making his second career start, a redshirt freshman from Yonkers, New York, Derek Robertson. And on first down, it's another big pickup, a gain of eight. Uh, Freddie Brock, he was a three star recruit out of East High School in Rochester who wanted to come to Orono, Maine to follow in the footsteps of fellow Rochester native Ernest Edwards, who's now in the Canadian Football League. Freddie Brock doing his thing on first down. He gets the rock again on second down, and the Black Bears showing they can move the football to begin this third quarter. And once again, the offensive line are doing a good job of getting a push at the point of attack. They're firing off the ball with a flat back. They're getting inside hands on the defenders, and they're pushing them backwards. They've got the defensive lineman for NIU on skates. The center is Michael Jaraci from Bel Air, Maryland. One of the team captains and a preseason all-conference player who might get a shot at the NFL. They run right behind him after a three-yard gain. Dropped to the turf. Once again, Freddie Brock. C.J. Brown, the second-year freshman safety with the tackle. And I love the size of the offensive line for me. They go at about 6'4 and a half, about 300 pounds. That is really good size, and at 6'4 and a half, you've got long arms. So once they get inside hands, they're able to get extension on those defenders. Xavier Scott in motion. Hand off to the tailback, who is tripped up at the 47-yard line. Freddie Brock 
That'll bring up third down at about five. Well, we've seen Jordan Hansen make some big tackles. That was one there. And now a Husky defender is going to have to come up with another stop to get off the field. Robertson completes the pass at the 43. Driven backwards, Steve Petrick, the tight end. And that is going to be a first down for Maine. And a good job by Robertson dec deciphering where he had the matchup advantage. He had the size advantage with the tight end on the smaller defender. And he did a good job of delivering a strike where he could get possession of the football right at the sticks. So a good job by the tight end to know where the first down was, where he needed to be, to be able to catch the ball, knowing that the defender was going to be on top of him to get that first down. That play is going to be blown dead. And the main head coach, Nick Charlton, is looking for some sort of answer to Prior why. The, snap, the previous play is under further review. So you heard it. They're going to review the uh, previous play. And I thought it was close, but what was interesting, the official immediately said first down. They didn't even think about it. They just immediately said first down. But on that play, what, what was interesting is they walk two linebackers up in the gaps. So what they're doing is they're trying to confuse the offensive lineman. As an offensive lineman, when you have linebackers walk up into the gaps, you have to make your calls. You have to identify the middle linebacker. Once you identify that middle linebacker, now you alert the other off the center identifies the middle linebacker. You alert the other offensive lineman as to where their assignment is. So what they did, they walked those linebackers up into those outside gaps, trying to confuse those offensive linemen. At the snap of the football, they dropped back into coverage. So I thought it was a good job by Robertson to know where to go with the football with that size advantage, that matchup advantage with the bigger tight end on the smaller defender. No matter what those linebackers did, he knew where he needed to go with the football. As they review to see if Freddie Brock did indeed get the first down. How much conversation is there between offensive linemen? Is there chatter on every single play? Absolutely. Well, there's chatter when you've got guys walking up and moving around because the goal for the defender is to confuse the offensive lineman. Because if you confuse the right person, you give a free rush to a defender, which allows to get free reign and a free opportunity to take one out on the quarterback. So that's what you're trying to defend against as an offensive lineman making sure you protect your quarterback, especially in a situation like that where it's pivotal for you to get great protection so you can get that first down. Again, they are reviewing to see if Maine did indeed get the first down. The call on the field was first down. Let's see if it stands. After further review, forward progress was stopped short of the line of game. The ball will be played to the 42 and a half yard line. It will be fourth down. So now the decision is, if you're main, do you go for it? It's not a decision if I'm the head coach, I'm going for it. You've got momentum going right now. You've been able to run the ball effectively. You've got to challenge your offensive line right now. This is where you get down in a four-point stance, and you basically bear crawl to up the defenders and fall forward for one yard. Maine head coach Nick Charlton told us Thursday afternoon that that morning at practice he challenged his guys. They were sharp. They were up to the challenge. Here's another challenge on a key fourth down. And what I love about it, the quarterback is under center. Robertson hands it off. And I don't think he got it. It appears to me Freddie Brock was stopped short of the line to gain. Certainly the Huskies feel that way. I don't prepare for the call. Freddie Brock is a smaller back, 5'10", 170 pounds. I use my bigger back, Elijah Barnwell. I bring some big guys in, a tight end, maybe an H-back to get more of a lead block on that play. I like the fact that they were under center. But also, if you're under center, why not go with the quarterback sneak? You know, you've got a big quarterback in Robertson, 6'2", 205. I think he can fall forward. 
you know, as a quarterback, you look and you see where the lane is on the A-gap, and if you see an opportunity, you take the snap and you fall forward to get that first down. And so after turning the football over on downs, first down run for Whaley. Breaks a couple of tackles, spins into the second level. It's a first down for the Huskies. And great penetration by number 95, Justin Sambu, but he just couldn't make the tackle. If he makes that tackle, there's about a four-yard loss. Watch number 95 right here. He's got an opportunity right there, but you've got to make that play because once you let Whaley get up the field, he's hard to bring down. Whaley made at least three defenders miss. You can see how he busted a 75-yarder two weeks ago in the wild game against the Wyoming Cowboys. And that ankle looks good. Here he is, straight up the gut. Spins again away from a would-be tackler, and it's another NIU first down. The average is 119 yards per game on the ground. Tops in the back, number 12 in the NCAA. And once again, you're getting great push by the offensive lineman. You see offensive lineman up at the second level covering up the defenders. You've got third-level defenders making tackles now. That's what you want to see as an offensive coordinator. Lombardi fakes the handoff, rolls right, has a man, a one-handed grab. What a beauty. First and goal, NIU. Tristan Tavis with a highlight reel catch. And it looked like the ball was going to be way out of bounds, and Tavis reaches out at the last moment and grips it with that glove and brings it into his body. A good job not allowing the ball to move, pressing it against his body to maintain possession and put his team in the red zone, in a position to get another score on the football board. This is the kind of one-handed grab we see once or twice a night on SportsCenter. Outstanding by the redshirt freshman from Pleasant Plains, Illinois. On first and goal, Harrison Whaley inside the five-yard line. They'll mark him at about the four. And is it Clint Ratchevich time? This is where you get the ball to Clint Ratchevich. He's a power runner. This is when you get your Swiss Army knife because you don't know what he's going to do. He may catch it out of the backfield. Yeah. He may carry it. He may run Wildcat. Well, he's the Rat Dog. That's his nickname. He squats over 600 pounds. Tops on the team. Over 400 pounds on the bench press. He runs a 34, or rather a 47340. And here is the Rat Dog. And he's still on his feet into the end zone. There's a flag on the play, though. Holding offense, number 69. 10-yard penalty, repeat, second down. So take the touchdown off the board on the holding penalty against the right tackle, Nolan Potter. And you cannot hold. You see right there in the middle of your screen, number 96, trying to disengage from the offensive lineman, and he grabbed it. You've got to keep your hands on the inside of the breastplate. Once you get outside the inside of that breastplate on the shoulders, the officials are going to make that call every time. Ratkovich remains in the backfield. Cole Tucker is the receiver to the left. A designed run for Lombardi, and it does not develop. Ray Miller, the Mike linebacker out of Burns High School in South Carolina, was waiting for him and dropped him to the turf. And they tried to catch Maine, not paying attention, running to the boundary, the short side of the field, trying to get it up in there in the, in the crease. A good job by Ratkovich with the block, but a better job by the defenders with pursuit and not allowing Lombardi to get to the end zone. We have an injured player on the sideline who's not on the playing surface. He is just out of bounds, but close enough. And now with a little bit of training assistance back onto his feet is Shakur Smalls making his third start of the season at strong safety. Good to see that the young man who his coaches say has an incredible football IQ, which is why he's getting so much playing time. 
see the young man from Philly able to get back over to the sideline under his own power. And that was interesting. The coaching staff from Maine talked about football IQ. They said, you know, we've got players with great athletic ability, but unless you've got that football IQ, we can't put you on the field right. because you will not make good decisions. And good decisions are what wins you football games. And so Smalls will have to sit out at least this one play. That'll be third and goal from just inside the 10 yard line. Rocky Lombardi statistically putting up a good performance for NIU. Trying to build on their seven point lead. Lombardi to the air. He's got a man incomplete. A little bit too tall for the five foot 10 inch Trayvon Rudolph. And number three, Richard Carr never turned around to locate the football. This is a good throw by Lombardi and a good attempt by Rudolph to squeeze that football just out of his reach, but a good attempt to try and get possession of that football to get the touchdown. And so now John Richardson, the redshirt sophomore from Orleans Park, Illinois. Number 16, Jalen to attempt a 27 yard field goal it is good and the lead stretches to 10. the outstanding one-handed catch by the red shirt freshman tight end tristan tavis sets up the field goal and the huskies enjoy a 24 14 lead Nearly 25 years ago, lawmakers passed comprehensive internet regulations. What happened after that? If the internet has come a long way, shouldn't internet regulations do? Today we're in Carolina Beach, making a Twisted Tea drop. We're surprising real Twisted Tea fans who love the smooth and refreshing taste of Twisted Tea Hard Iced Tea. Get your own Twisted Tea drop. Keep it twisted. An important start in the third quarter for Northern Illinois to get points on that drive. It looked like for a moment they had a touchdown. Rakovich's TD, though, was called back because of a holding penalty. They get the three points, and so is that a win for the Huskies, or is that a win for the Black Bears? I think it's a win for the Black Bears because you don't get the fourth down conversion. NIU drives all the way down the field inside the 10-yard line. They get what we thought was a touchdown, and they're able to regroup defensively and hold them to a field goal. So I think it was a win for the Black Bears. So now Derek Jackson's defense for NIU comes out. He says they need to be more disruptive. Got to have hands in the air for deflections. Through the first three weeks, they had only three tip balls. He says he's got a lot of playmakers potentially out there, but they've got to make more plays. You see the scoring drive, seven plays for Coach Hammock's club. They get the field goal and the 10-point lead. So now Robertson, who grew up just outside of New York City, he's a big Derek Jeter fan. His name is Derek, not named for him, but uh, he's played well in just his second career collegiate start in place of the injured Joe Fignano, who is uh, expected to be out four to six weeks with a high ankle sprain. He's one of the best in the CAA, but in the meantime, Robertson has been steadying the ship here today for the Black Bears. Robertson out of Iona Prep, went to Bridgeton Academy, a couple of hours away in Maine from Orono. There's that ability to wiggle and make a man miss that we have seen earlier today by Freddie Brock. Freddie Brock has some of the best stop and go ability that I've seen in a very long time. He, he looks like a number 28 I played with, Warwick Dunn, with his ability to stop and be at top speed when he makes that cut. He runs the same speed east and west that he does north and south. On third down, trying to get out of the hold of the defender, but his forward progress is going to be a yard shot. Eric Rogers, the outstanding second-year corner from Burlington, New Jersey, hanging on for dear life. That'll bring up fourth down and one. 
and you almost want to go for it if you're the main coaching staff. And right now, they held on right here. The defender did a good job of holding on to that ankle. And you see him, Brock, trying to dive forward. If he stretches that ball out, I think he has an opportunity to get that first down. You've got to know where the sticks are. And this is interesting because I thought that was a bad spot. When you look at where he was on the field, him diving forward, he didn't stretch the ball out like I thought he could have. But I don't know about that spot. I thought he was a little bit closer to the first down mark. The ball being short of the line of game. We'll review the play. And so the main coaching staff feels the same way you do for us. They want them to take a look at the spot. Northern Illinois began the season with a signature victory in Atlanta. 22-21 over Georgia Tech as we take another look. They've got to get to the 35. Now watch. He's not down here. He's not down. You know, it's according to where that left elbow seems to be the first thing that went down. Where was the football when either his knee or elbow went down? He's not down. He's not down. Elbow See that elbow. Down. Maybe a little bit short, but I still think it's a better spot yes. when they review this. I think it'll be fourth and field is confirmed. It is fourth and short. Yeah, still fourth down. But not close enough to further entice Maine to go for it, so the punt team comes back out. And I don't know, Doug. I'm coming in here with the idea I'm doing any and everything I need to do to win. I have nothing to lose. I may go for it. Maybe that's why I'm up in the box calling the game <laughs> <laughs> and not coaching the ball game. But I I've got an offensive lineman's mentality. I feel like I can count on my line to get me inches, although they didn't on the last fourth down. Right. Well, and I like you. I wasn't an offensive lineman, but as a fan, you always want them to go for it. Because I don't have to answer for it if they don't get it. The punt returner is Cole Tucker. Fourth year junior from DeKalb High School. He signals for a fair catch. And let it bounce at the 18 yard line and that was a beauty that goes out of bounds by the senior putter from St. Louis Matt Ferentz. Northern Illinois up 10 here in DeKalb. AFLAC policyholders have been paid 37 billion directly. That's a lot of money. Somebody say money? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. AFLAC is ready for prime time. Is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. I need to try it first. Yeah. former Florida State offensive lineman Forrest Connolly. I'm Doug Sherman on a gorgeous fall football Saturday here in DeKalb, Illinois. We're about 60 miles west of Soldier Field where uh, college game day was today. The big Notre Dame-Wisconsin matchup. We are thrilled to have ourselves a football game here. The Black Bears out of the CAA hanging with the team from the back. Northern Illinois gets the football back deep in its own territory. The quarterback Rocky Lombardi to Tyrese Ritchie and yards after the catch have been a big problem today as Ritchie is able to break tackles and really add on extra yardage. Well, they put Rakovich in motion and nobody went with him, so Lombardi knew he had an extra blocker on the outside. And once he got the ball to Ritchie, there was opportunity for him to make plays. Harrison Whaley busts it out to the 30-yard line. It's another big gain and another NIU first down. And you're starting to see this offensive line for Northern Illinois set the tone. They've got a 60-pound weight advantage, and they're starting to lean on these main defenders. And you see them covering up all the defenders. There's no open defender until you get to the third level. And the offensive line for Northern Illinois averages about 310 across the front much bigger than the front on defense for me. And young players always think you have to just clean somebody up, get a pancake block. All you have to do is cover up those defenders. And when you've got great backs like Whaley, they know how to cut off of you and get to the open field. Rat 
Petkovic, the running back, transfer from Western Illinois, takes the handoff between the tackles, absorbs the contract, uh, contact, no problem, as he falls forward for another first down. And right now this offense is just starting to beat up on this main defensive line. And you have to think there's attrition starting to set in. The bigger, stronger, faster linemen are beating these guys to the point of attack. You see white jerseys going backwards. You see red and black helmets going forward and getting a good push at the point of attack. And again, the Black Bears are without one of their captains, defensive end Jamel Wiley, who made the trip. It was a game time decision, decided not to play him. So the rotation of those big boys up front just a little bit shorter. Fumble! Still loose, picked up by the Black Bears. A huge play by Kyrie Manns on the takeaway. The Black Bears are in business at the NIU 15-yard line. And whoa, how things have changed. We got to see why Lombardi dropped the ball. You see now he's got possession of the ball. It's almost like it was an RPO type play. He put the ball in the belly of the back, and I don't know if the back was expecting it. And Kyrie Mans is just rumbling and stumbling down the field. <laughs> it's almost like he was trying to gather himself as he got possession of the football. Then I think he realized, okay, let me make sure I maintain possession of the football. And he covers it up, and that's exactly what you want your defenders to do. A huge play for the Black Bears and their sophomore from New Rochelle, New York. That's just north of New York City. Gives the football back to his offense. Young in motion. Hand off up the middle. Inside the 10-yard line. And the Black Bears on first down. Knocking on the door again thanks to Freddie Brock. Freddie Brock's got some of the best feet in college football. I know <laughs> we're early in the season, but watch his footwork. You see him right here. Boom, stop and go. I mean, the way that he's able to cut on the dime. And once again, James Esther had a beat and had a play to be made, but he can't get to him because he stops and goes and turns and moves and gets up the field. Back to Brock. Wrapped up quickly, but he gets to the five-yard line, and it might be another first down. Indeed it is. First and goal for the Black Bears. And I can't say it enough. He reminds me of another 28. I know I said it earlier, and I know These some people words. listening. Those are big words, but he reminds me of Warwick Dunn with the way that he's able to stop and go and get to top speed instantly. Keep an eye on number 10, the wide receiver to the left, Andre Miller. Going to throw into the end zone on the other side of the football field. Incomplete. Try to find Sean Bowman, one of their tight ends. Well defended. And if Robinson puts a little bit more air under the football, I think Bowman is making this play and celebrating a touchdown, but he didn't put enough air, which allowed the defender, number 12, Eric Rogers, to get his hand in there and knock that down. Also, you got Andre Miller on the outside by himself in man coverage. Throw it up. Let your big fella go get it. Going to try some power football. NIU is ready. Brock is stopped at the five. Third down, Doug. I isolate my big guy on the outside and throw it up and see if he can go get it. But once again, good penetration by this Northern Illinois defense. They're not worried about the play fake, the ball fake. They're going inside, trying to make a play, putting pressure on the young quarterback, and they were able to catch this offense trying to run, sneak a run in to get the touchdown. Miller comes back in, replacing Xavier Scott. And before the third down play, we've got a timeout call. We'll take it with him with 3.33 remaining in the third. Nearly 25 years ago, lawmakers passed comprehensive internet regulations. What happened after that? If the internet has come a long way, shouldn't internet regulations too? 
finding ways. Today, you have to manage expectations and lower wait times. Last one. With IBM, you can do both. Unifying apps and data across clouds helps you predict and manage supply chain issues for your business and for your customers. Third and goal from the six yard line as Maine looks to cut into this 10 point NIU lead. Derek Robertson, the quarterback, number 13. Each of his feature backs, Barnwell and Brock, have touchdowns on the ground this afternoon. Going to try and throw for it to the end zone. Incomplete, trying to find Devin Young. And what I don't understand, you've got first and goal at the five-yard line, and not one of those plays did you try to go to your matchup advantage, Andre Miller, on the outside. He's a matchup advantage on every single play, and not one of the play calls was to him. I don't understand the play calling on that series. And so now the field goal attempt from 23 yards out by Johnny Messina, who is only one of four so far this season. The low kick is no good. It turns into a huge stop for the Huskies defense to keep it at a 10-point game. When you talk about a backbreaker, you recover a fumble, you get down to the five-yard line, first and goal. You don't move the ball on three plays, and then you don't get the field goal. It looked like the hole was good. He just hooked it. Mm. There was no immediate pressure. You got to take your time and make sure you kick the ball through the goal post and put your team in position to be one score down behind. Well, for whatever reason, Johnny Messina just has not been as good at Maine as he was as a Campbell Camel, where he holds almost every program kicking record. He was 15 of 19 kicking field goals at his previous school. And now at Maine with that miss, he is only one of five. Northern Illinois back to the ground with Harrison Whaley. With the clock running, 3.15 remaining in the third quarter. And for the main defense, they've got to continue to play tough at the point of attack and try and get a three and out and get the ball back to the offense. Bull Tucker, Tyrese Ritchie, the wide receivers. Richie in the slot. Movement on that offensive line. Ball start. Offense, number 83. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Well, again, Nick Charlton, the head coach for the Maine Black Bears, on Thursday said he really challenged his team, and he got on the plane coming from Maine to get here to Northern Illinois and feeling good about his team. And in terms of what his defense has done the first three games of the regular season compared to what we've seen so far today, got to feel good about that, I would think, Paul. Absolutely. They've come to play. They've played spirited football, and they've done a good job at times. You've had some setbacks like on that play right there but i think this overall they've done a really good job slowing down an niu offense that came into this ball game running very effectively cole tucker with the first down pickup out to the 31 yard line McCarty hands it off harrison Able to elude the first two tacklers, eventually dropped for a loss, though, just shy of the 30-yard line. And you see Ray Miller once again, number six, being disruptive. He didn't make the tackle, but him being as disruptive as he has been allowed for pursuit to get to the ball carrier and bring him down. You don't always have to make the big tackle, but if you can disrupt the play, you allow for the pursuit to get there. Loss of one, second down and 11. Straight up the middle, still on his feet with a flag down is Whaley. The flag came from the offensive backfield, which will make you think it'll be holding. I think it's 
the left arm. Holding, holding. Offense, number 70. 10 yard penalty, repeat, second down. And so Marcus Cox from Peoria. And they call that on the left tackle, but I think it could have been called on either the left tackle or the left guard. Both of those guys got a handful of jersey, and you can see the jersey stretching as they hold the defenders as Whale is coming through the hole. Either way, it moves the Huskies back to their own 20. And it'll be second down and 21. Can somebody for the Black Bears again come up with a big play? That was the formula last week in the win over Merrimack. They had four takeaways. On the check down, Ratkovich slips through a tackle. And the pursuit continues to come for the Black Bears, who don't let him get much. Rich Carr among those on the hit. And now, if I'm main, I'm keeping my safeties deep. But I want to make sure I know where the sticks are. Keep the offensive players behind the sticks. And if you allow them to make the catch, make the tackle. Don't go for the big play, the big hit. Just make the tackle and get the ball back to your offense. Third down and 16. Here comes the pressure from the Black Bears. Lombardi gets rid of the football. He's got a man caught by Cole Tucker to the 30, inside the 20, down to the 10-yard line. The Huskies knocking on the door one more time. And this has been an issue for Maine all season. They come into this game giving up 307 yards passing. Right here, they've got man coverage on the outside. The safety got caught looking inside as opposed to playing deep and being in a bracket position. You cannot get caught looking inside if you're the safety. You've got to be deeper than the receiver. First and 10, just outside the 10. The back shoulder throw intended for Tyrese Ritchie, incomplete. And a good job by Lombardi, a perfect throw down the sideline. But once again, I think the safety has to be deep and not allow for the offensive player to get behind him. Number 30 tried to do the best that he could, Kazir Brown covering on the outside, but he never looked back to locate the football. Well, Lombardi has completed 17 of his 21 pass attempts through three quarters. Still a football game. The Black Bears missed a key field goal, but they're trying to hang in there with all they've got. We head to the fourth quarter with NIU on top by 10. AFLAC policyholders have been paid $37 billion directly. That's a lot of money. Did somebody say money? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. AFLAC is ready for prime time. <laughs> is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. I need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On second down, first play of the fourth quarter. Up the middle by Whaley. And he is tackled at about the seven-yard line after a four-yard pickup. With Forrest Connolly, I'm Doug Sherman. Back at Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Illinois, Northern Illinois, has been pushed throughout. But that man has been very efficient at quarterback. Other than the interception and the fumble, he has thrown the football with great accuracy, Forrest. We saw some really good decision making outside of that interception. Uh, he's thrown some balls where only his receivers can make a play on it. I like what I've seen this afternoon from Lombardi. 17 of 22, 282 yards passing, looking for some more. Throws a strike. Missed his intended receiver, though, Cole Tucker, who just moments ago, late in the third quarter, caught a 66 yard pass, which is why the Huskies are inside the red zone. And Lombardi saw Tucker late because he was open for a while on that play. And he put a little bit too much on it, threw it behind Tucker. He tried to make a play on it. Unfortunately, he couldn't. So now on fourth down, they bring the field goal unit out. John Richardson, very accurate. 
Brother Rice High School. It is good. And that stretches the lead for NIU to 13 points early in the fourth quarter. AFLAC policyholders have been paid $37 billion directly. That's a lot of money. Did somebody say money? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. AFLAC is ready for prime time. AFLAC is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. In a world of the unexpected, customers expect simple and personalized. With IBM, you can do both. Automating IT processes across clouds helps you save time so you can make sure your customers' needs are covered. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for the orange. Back in DeKalb, Illinois, NIU up 27-14 after the field goal by John Richardson. And we get to see more and more out of the co-captain quarterback, Rocky Lombardi, for NIU. Transferred after three years in East Lansing, where in those three years, he played in 22 games, had nine starts, threw for 11 touchdowns, over 1,000 yards passing in 2020. And while he couldn't really get anything going last week, we have seen more of that passing attack for NIU, and that's key with the MAC regular season just around the corner beginning next week for the Huskies. Well, they came into this ball game averaging 190 yards rushing. So they knew they could run the football. With this being a tougher ball game than anyone expected, they had to pass the ball a lot throughout the afternoon. And I think that bodes well. He was a very good quarterback for Michigan State. And I think there was a change in offensive philosophy when Mel Tucker took over that job. And that's why he moved over here to NIU. But I think him passing the ball today and the way that he's passed the ball, he now gives the Mac schools that they'll be facing something different to think about as opposed to just coming in thinking they just have to stop the rushing attack. On first down. Not much room for the running back Tavion Banks, a sophomore from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, with his first attempt of the afternoon. And right now with this Northern Illinois defense coming downhill, I think you run some misdirection or you get some quick pass game going if you're main. You cannot continue to try to run the football now that we're in the fourth quarter and you're down two scores. And if you're main, how do you get the football to number 10, Andre Miller? They have not targeted him here in the second half. They go to the opposite side of the field to their other big playmaker, Devin Young, and the Black Bears with some chunk yardage to move the football. Well, I think you answered your own question. They haven't gone to him. How do you get it to him? Go to him. <laughs> <laughs> they just haven't. But a good job by Devin Young getting the ball in the open field. He's a fast, quick receiver on the outside. He's another playmaker. But you've got to go to your big fellow when you've got man coverage on the outside. At least give him an opportunity to make a play. Well, has NIU taken him away, or has Maine just not looked his way? I just don't think they've looked his way. We talked about it off camera. That second and goal, he wasn't even in the ball game. You've got to keep him in the game. Even if he's a decoy, you've got to keep your big play receiver in the game. Robertson down the left sideline, incomplete. Trying to find Devin Young. Seemed to cut off the route and never had a chance to get there. That'll bring up second and ten. So what's the challenge for the offensive coordinator, Andrew Dresner? How much do you mix things up to get the football into the hands of Andre Miller, your big playmate? I think you call a play for Andre Miller, you know, specifically. Hey, get the ball to Andre. Talk to your quarterback. Get the ball to the playmaker. There's that burst we've seen by Freddie Brock. Tackled at the 45-yard line. There have been a couple of plays where you've got Andre Miller on the outside at six foot three, going one on one against Jordan Gandy, number fourteen at five ten. So you've got a five inch height advantage with your receiver, with the defensive back. We've seen that throughout the afternoon. You see it at the top of your screen right now. You don't have deep safety help on that side of the field. Go down the field. Go vertical. Robertson. There's the man he was looking for, Andre Miller, and a flag is down at about the point where the catch was made. 
and I think it's a pick play, an illegal block before Miller got possession of the football. Pass interference. Offense, number 83. 15-yard penalty. Repeat. Third down. Anyway, 83 has to do, you have to sell it. You know, don't go out there to block. Just act, go run your route. Actually, he didn't do anything on that play. I don't know why they called it. He sold it. He didn't block. He turned like he was looking for the football. That's not a good call by the officials on that play. Nonetheless, it goes against Michael Monios, the sophomore from Montreal, and it moves Maine back to its own 40-yard line. And I agree. He's got his hands up like, what did I do? Usually when they call that play, the guy's actually blocking. Right. Robertson throws over the middle, caught at the 48-yard line. Young tackle at the 49. That'll bring up fourth down at nine. And so the Black Bears offense goes out. David Gelb and the punt team comes on. 11.25 remaining in the fourth quarter. And you hate to see a bad call affect a drive like that call did. I think that call affected that drive. They had third and short uh, going into the next play. I don't like that call. Gell boots it away with the win, and it's going to bounce through the end zone. Northern Illinois gets the football back, leading by 13 here in DeKalb. Life is all about choices. You could put it in there or get it repaired fast. Don't go it alone. Trust you break I fix. Your tech fixed by Assurian. This place isn't a paradise, it's a prison. Out here, Out here we're trapped. We're free. In this endless cycle. The only way to protect the cycle. The only way to break the cycle is to kill. The cornfields of the Calv, Illinois, just about harvest time here in this part of the country. And the beautiful campus of Northern Illinois University. Their Huskies hold on to a 27-14 lead. Go Huskies indeed. All we see around is Cardinal and Black. And they have the football at their own 20-yard line taking on the main Black Bears. Both these teams come in with records of one and two. It's been close and competitive throughout. But we see through attrition perhaps the Huskies beginning to inch away. There's another pickup by Harrison Whalen. And the thing about Willie, he's just a downhill volume runner. He seems to get stronger as the game progresses. And he's an ankle tackle away from busting out a big 60, 70 yard run. You see right there, if that ankle tackle doesn't happen, he's still running right now because Maine has got everybody inside the box. Their safeties are playing close to the line of scrimmage to try and stop the run. But he's not getting touched until he gets to the third level. Rapkovich wrapped up. But not before he picks up five yards and another first down. Well, we talked about when Whaley first got on this NIU campus as a high schooler out of Urbandale High School in Iowa. He was more of a wide receiver defensive back. Immediately, Coach Hammock and his staff said, we like this guy. We're not sure where we would like him. And they immediately then turned him into a running back where he'd done a little bit of that in high school, but he has effectively turn into an elite Mac running back here in the second year. Well, sometimes you see receivers that are built like running backs that when they get possession of the football, they're very difficult to bring down. Lombardi keeps, and all he's got is turf in front of him. To the 30, to the 20, he's going to go. Touchdown, Huskies. Rocky Lombardi. 
putting and up some numbers and getting things done. And that's just the pr product of a great play call. They've been gashing Maine in the middle gut of that defense. And all these defenders are crashing down. And you see Lombardi with the RPO. He puts, puts the ball in the back's belly, pulls it out. And there's no contain whatsoever. And at this point, it's just I'm going to be faster than you down the field to get to the end zone. Great play call. Great decision by Lombardi to keep that football. And with 9.34 remaining, that may be the ultimate separator for the Huskies. Junior quarterback from Clive, Iowa, to the house to make it a 20 point game. Affleck policyholders have been paid 37 billion directly. That's a lot of money. Did somebody say money? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. Affleck is ready for prime time. Affleck is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. Twisted Tea is a refreshing, hard iced tea made with real brewed tea. Keep it twisted. Beautiful sunny afternoon here in DeKalb, Illinois. Temperature is somewhere in the mid-60s, but uh, if you're sitting in the sun, it's real comfortable and the shade not bad at all as uh, the calendar is getting close to turning to October. 9.34 remaining fourth quarter, and now Maine down by 20 going to have to put together another sustained drive. We've seen him do it multiple times today. If they got it in him here, Forrest, was the, as they get the football back. Well, right now, you're looking at your team, and you're seeing what type of heart your team has, and you're wanting your team to go out and continue to compete because you want to see, you know, what you're looking for in the future, and that's a team that does not give up, does not quit. You know, this has been a tough ball game throughout. Northern Illinois has made more plays in the second half to put themselves up by 20, but you still want to see your team compete if you're made. Freddie Brock met at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Cade Haberman, freshman from Omaha, among those on the stop. Nick Rattine, sophomore linebacker as well. One of the things I like to see from the main offense is uh, throwing the football down the field, getting more vertical. We haven't seen as much of a vertical game as I thought we'd see, especially with Northern Illinois packing the box. I like to see them try and be more vertical. Robertson now 11 of 21 passing. That's just a one-yard gain. The ball came loose. They say he was down, but uh, no gain. So 11 of 21 passing for 121 yards and a long of 33. And he was definitely down before yeah. the ball came out. But once again, you see this east and west passing, and there's too much speed on the outside for them to get past the Northern Illinois defenders. Robertson under big pressure gets rid of the football. Coming in to make the hit, James Esther, the nose tackle from Detroit. Out of Cass Tech, second team all Mac, Made sure that Robertson had to get rid of the football before he wanted to. Well, Hester does a good job of bringing immediate pressure. Some of the quarterbacks don't like to see right in their face. He's able to get great push at the point of attack from the nose position. David Gell back onto the field to punt away to Cole Tucker. At this point in the game, I think both coaching staffs will start to put in subs because you don't want to get starters hurt where it looks like we know what the outcome is going to be. It just trickles into the end zone, but a booming punt that Gell could not get to die. So it will come out of the end zone for Northern Illinois. Well, there's head coach Nick Charlton, 32 years old, from Salem, Massachusetts. He was the offensive coordinator at Maine before being promoted three years ago to become the head coach. He spent three years at his alma mater, Boston College, as a grad assistant under Steve Adazio and the offensive coordinator at BC at that time. You may have heard of him, Ryan Day, now the head coach at Ohio State. Go 
Going Wildcat. Direct snap to Radkovich. Breaks a tackle out to the 25. And down at the 30-yard line. What a run by the Rat Dog. And you see the Swiss Army knife at its best. They snuck it out there. I don't know if the defense noticed it, but you had Lombardi spread out at wide receiver and Ratkovich bounces off a of defender. He stiffs arms another defender. He fakes out another defender. If he's able to keep his feet, he may be able to get to the edge, but you see his ability right there. He's a tough, hard-nosed runner with the ability to make cuts and make moves and get positive yards and get to the outside. It was his touchdown reception late in the Georgia Tech game week one that set up the game-winning two-point conversion. Jay Ducker, second-year freshman running back from Bellevue, Nebraska, with the run. Ducker didn't play last year because of a preseason injury, but he's a guy who knows how to get to the end zone. How about this for us? At Bellevue West High School, he was the Nebraska High School Player of the Year and throughout his career, 110 career touchdowns. 110! How does he get out of here? How does, how does he not? <laughs> how is he not <laughs> in, a, in a Nebraska uniform? Now they give it back to Ducker. And the 5'10", 185 pounder able to pick up maybe three yards to bring up third down and seven. And he played 11 on 11 football in Nebraska and was completely dominant. Back out of the game, Ratkovich back in at running back for NIU. <laughs> Throwing deep, underthrown, incomplete. Already trying to time it with Messiah Travis, but instead it brings up fourth down. And one of the things I think the main defensive coaches need to work on with their defensive backs is getting these guys to turn around and locate the football. I have not seen any defenders on these pass plays, on these vertical pass plays, turn around to try and locate the football. They've got to do a better job of that, especially as they get into the meat and potatoes of their conference play. You've got to be able to turn around, locate the football, play great defense on the outside. Jacob Henney catches the punt, hit immediately, and fumbles it. NIU with the football. Although now Maine says it got it back. Let's see what happens at the bottom of that scrum. Who's going to wind up with the football? Both teams say they have it, and the fight continues. Come the flags predictably. When the whistle blows, you got to stop, right? But I don't like the flags in that play. Everybody's trying to get possession of the football. You know what? They're not fighting. They're not pushing and shoving. They're just tugging at the football. <laughs> come on, it is football now. I mean, it, <laughs> I mean, come on. But again, when the whistle blows, you're supposed to stop, right? Yeah, but you know, everybody's trying to get possession of the football. I mean, <laughs> right here, I mean, the ball just pops out. And it pops right into the, the northern Illinois defender's hands. But he couldn't squeeze the football. He dropped it. So I think it's Maine's ball. He didn't squeeze the football. The ruling on the field is the ball was touched by the receiving team, ultimately recovered by the kicking team. So will be first and ten for Northern Illinois. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on the receiving team, number 11, his first of the game. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the dead ball spot. Northern Illinois, first and ten. I don't know about that. I, I think that's a questionable call, first of all. But when you watch, the Northern Illinois player never possessed the football. It bounced up. It looked like he caught the ball, but watch as he's going down. The ball is not squeezed. It's not possessed right here. Watch. He's got it, but the ball is not possessed. It's still moving. The ball is on the ground right now. Everybody's scrambling for the football. I thought that was a premature possession to Northern Illinois call, and I thought it was premature for the officials to throw the flag 
it should be white ball, and it should not have been a unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on that play because guys are tugging at the ball, and we know everything goes on at the bottom of the pile when there's a loose ball. So it goes as a forced fumble by Nick Routine. One of the captains for Northern Illinois. They've got the football at the 17-yard line. Lombardi going to run it again. He's got room again. His second consecutive rushing touchdown. It's all NIU here in the fourth quarter. Well, it took a while, but the Huskies have flexed their muscles here in the second half. Well, that play is totally on Justin Sample, number 95. What they did, they went with the quick set. And everybody reacted and everybody came flying down thinking they were going to try to run the ball quickly up the middle. And once again, Lombardi put the ball in the back's belly, pulled it out. And when Justin Sambu came downhill, there was nobody to keep contained and it was an easy score for Northern Illinois. Lombardi's carried the football eight times for 104 yards and two touchdowns. And he has opened up this football game to a 41-14 score. AFLAC policyholders have been paid $37 billion directly. That's a lot of money. Did somebody say money? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. AFLAC is ready for prime time. AFLAC is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. Nearly 25 years ago, lawmakers passed comprehensive internet regulations. What happened after that? If the internet has come a long way, shouldn't internet regulations too? With under six minutes remaining in the fourth quarter here in DeKalb, Illinois. With Forrest Connolly, I'm Doug Sherman, and the Black Bears have put up a valiant fight through the first three quarters. Have seen it slip away, and uh, the quarterback, Rocky Lombardi, has been in the middle of most of it. 282 yards passing, 130 yards rushing, and three rushing touchdowns. Devin Young on the return out to the 25-yard line. And uh, this for Northern Illinois is their final non-conference game of the season. They'll be back here at Husky Field for a uh, conference opener next Saturday afternoon, which you can see on ESPN Plus against Eastern Michigan. But uh, how about those four road trips at Toledo, at Central, at Kent State, and at Buffalo in what's probably going to be, be a pretty chilly UB Stadium in the middle of November? Definitely chilly, but that Bowling Green game sits and looms large with Bowling Green doing what they did today that team will probably come in here on a high but they've got probably the toughest match schedule of all the teams in the MAC. A one-handed grab off the pass from Robertson and the Black Bears have themselves a first down on the terrific catch by Andre Miller. And the first time they've gone to Andre Miller in the second half, which I, I'm just so confused about because he had such a big first half. But you see the ability to snatch it with one hand and then drag defenders down the field. He gets possession and he bounces off several defenders and drags about four defenders down the field for five extra yards. Well, you identify it pregame. I mean, he was being defended by a guy who's five foot eight, Jermaine March, giving up. What's that? Six inches. Yes. Hard to hang with him. And the thing about it, even if he doesn't catch the ball, if you go to him a couple of times at that matchup, now you make the defensive coordinator for NIU start to game plan and make adjustments because they don't want to allow the big play to occur. But them not going to him never made NIU make any adjustments. John Gay, the running back into the game, a junior from Jeanette, Pennsylvania. As the Black Bears go deeper onto the depth chart, Gay once again lowering the shoulder out across the 45-yard line. And we should mention what happened in Mount Pleasant, Michigan this afternoon. Backup quarterback Daniel Richardson threw for three fourth-quarter touchdowns in Central Michigan rallied from a 17-point second-half deficit to beat FIU 31-27. So that matchup blooming for NIU against Central Michigan. Not going to be easy. That is a really tough max schedule upcoming. And it's been a really good Saturday for the MAC Conference. <laughs> When you look at some of the comeback wins that they've had, and the big win, of course, being the Bowling Green win against Minnesota. And the Falcons beat the uh, Golden Gophers 14-10 this afternoon. 
Western Michigan defeated San Jose State 23-3 in a non-conference game. You know what a big conference game that has gone final, Toledo 22, Ball State 12. A couple of teams that should be in the mix fighting for a spot in the MAC championship game in Detroit as September turns to October and November. by the Huskies. Now here's a look at some of the scores we're talking about. Ohio went to uh, Northwestern today and lost 35 to 6. And so Tim Alvin's first year as head coach of the Bobcats continues to be a struggle. And uh, when you take over for a coaching legend in Frank Solich, who he had been an assistant for decades under, worked with him back in Lincoln at Nebraska, it's not always that easy to become that guy, and they've had turnover, as everybody does, and, and it's been a rough start to the Alvin era there in Athens, Ohio. Well, Frank Solich, 16 years at Ohio, so he set the tone for this ball club, four back East championships. I mean, here's a guy, 2006, 2009, 2011, 2016. You know, when you've got a coach that's been somewhere for so long and you have a transition to a new coach, although he's been on that staff, there's a difference of philosophy. And when you look at the personnel, it may not be the personnel that they need with the philosophy that is going on with the new coach. So there's an adjustment that needs to be made and that has to be made. So I think you have to give it a two to three year window to see how things gel and see how it goes. But Frank Solich, one of the better coaches that we've seen, especially in my lifetime with the time that he'd had at uh, Nebraska and what he built at that Ohio program with those guys being competitive in the MAC for all the time that he was there. And week two, Ohio suffered a really bad loss to Duquesne where the Dukes went into Athens and really took it to the Bobcats, were more physical and were the better team on that day. And uh, it's been that kind of start to the season for Ohio. And I think it's too early to make judgment. You know, once again, you've got to let the new coach get settled in. Uh, when you've been an assistant for so long and you finally get that opportunity to be a head coach, you know, you find out there's not a lot of coaching going on. <laughs> You know, you've got your assistants that you have to depend on. Kind of like Coach Solis depending on him. He's got to learn now to depend on his assistants. And he's got to go and get the talent that he wants and that he needs for that program to be as successful as he wants them to be. On third down, Brian Lee, the junior linebacker from Waldorf, Maryland, with the tackle for loss against Jay Ducker. That'll bring up fourth down. And I want to say this about this main ball club. I thought they played extremely well early. I think attrition started to set in. But I think that they have a lot of positives to lean on coming out of this ball game. Uh, they can run the football. And the way that they ran the football this afternoon, I think they're going to be a problem running the football. They have to continue to work on that passing game. They've got a young quarterback. They've got to continue to build on his confidence. And I think using their big receiver, Miller, on the outside, Devin Young, his ability to stretch the field with his speed, they've got something cooking over there, over there with that main offense. Yeah, Freddie Brock has rushed for 85 yards on 18 carries and a touchdown today. Barnwell has a rushing touchdown. Robertson has been good. He's been steady. But keep in mind, the starting quarterback, Joe Fignano, is expected back in the next couple of weeks from a high ankle sprain. He was hurt week two with James Madison, and he's second team all conference in the CAA, so he will make a difference at the point where he's fully healthy and able to get back onto the field for Nick Charlton's Black Bears, who are staring at a one and three start to the year, and they have one more non conference game on their schedule upcoming, a late game against UMass, another FBS opponent. But Nick Charlton's club will head back to Orono with a one and three record in just over a minute. Hunt team out there for NIU. Penny calls for the fair catch, and the Black Bears will come out with exactly one minute on the clock here in DeKalb. 
Well, Northern Illinois in that first half, you weren't quite sure what we were going to see out of them. They held a touchdown lead at the break, but uh, they really played much better in the second half and then really put it away in the fourth quarter. 17 unanswered points coming out after halftime. I think kind of sealed the deal for them. Uh, they had some really good plays, some good play calls, and Lombardi carrying the football, making good decisions on those quarterback keepers, I think was the key to this ball club, uh, winning and opening up this score. First down run for the Black Bears, Jordan Rowell. He's a senior from Bellwood, Illinois, and a transfer from Northern Illinois. He redshirted in 2017, then appeared in one game as a Husky in 2018, now getting a chance to play against his old team and getting a carry. Pick up a two, second down and eight, clock running. Rocky Lombardi, named for Rocky Blyer, the uh, tremendous Pittsburgh Steeler back in the 1970s. Put a stamp on this football game and on this football team at NIU. 17 of 24 passing, 282 yards, a touchdown and an interception. And as you just talked about, Forrest, his decisions running the football, he carried it 10 times for 119 yards and three touchdowns. That's a great day for a running back, an awesome day for a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Our final score, 41-14 Huskies. Final thought? Uh, this main ball club there will continue to get better in Northern Illinois has proven they can pass the ball as effectively as they run the football. The Huskies with a big second half improved their overall record to two and two with an impressive victory over the main Black Bears. The quarterback led the way, Rocky Lombardi. The line did the job as well. Defense toughened up in the second half of the Huskies get it done. For Forrest Connolly and our entire crew, I'm Doug Sherman saying so long from DeKalb, Illinois.